Ladies and gentlemen, a little Eric Prides for you. Some Pink Floyd remix. Gotta love that song. We don't need no education. We don't need no false control. I don't know what provoked me to play that song, but I love that song because I love Eric Prides and I love Pink Floyd. So there you have it. There's the song for What's Your Question, number 66. 66, of course, being the Christ. This is like kind of a very interesting um a very, very interesting, what's your question, the number of it. And I'm once again wearing my sunglasses prop because, as you all know, come on, everybody, let's say it, you're in a movie. <laughs> oh, man, it's kind of funny. All right, so anyway, that was my prop. I'm going to take these off so I can see. You're in a movie, folks. That's my final answer. You're in a video game, you're in a movie, you're in a simulation. They're all, they all fit within the context of that box. That's my final answer. As I continue to do this research, <laughs> it just keeps getting thrown in my face more and more and more and more that mankind is 
being used. How much free will do we have as human beings? I had this thought pop up today. I had this thought pop up today about free will. And, and are we making the choices in our lives? How, like, how do you explain, um, you know, leaving food out and it spoils? Did you make that choice? I mean, it's s simple, right? When you step in a pile of dog shit outside, did, did, you, did, did you do that? You see, so, like I've pondered this so many times. Like you break a glass on the floor, you sweep it up. You got to go to the store to buy new glasses. And on your way to the store, you meet somebody and they change the course of your life. You never would have met that person if you wouldn't have dropped that glass and broke it all over the floor. So did you accidentally break that glass? Did you, oh shit, I dropped it and it smashed all over the floor. You got guests coming over, it's your last wine glass or I don't know, maybe you dropped a, a tray of wine glasses and you got to rush to the store to buy new ones because you got guests coming over for your party. And when you're out at the store, you meet somebody that changes the course of your life. It's happened to some of you. So did you drop the glasses? Was that you doing it? Ponder this stuff, man. It's, it's happened to me a lot when I look back at my life. And I'm like, did I, did I really do that? Makes you think. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, what's your question? 66. I was looking at Route 66 in the United States, the historic Route 66, the ridiculous scripted Route 66. <laughs> I'm going to come out with a little decode on it because it's ridiculously scripted. The damn, the day that it was, was they, they came out with it and the day that it was retired. Scripted reality. Like, I don't know, they sitting down with the playing cards and the dates and they're choosing it to come out this way. And what would the purpose be? Anyway, I'm getting a little animated. I Big shout out, a big shout out to my main man, uh, Jordan over at Waters Above. He broke a thousand people on his live broadcast today. I was there to witness it. He was at 66.6 thousand .6 subscribers. He had the 666 and he broke for the first time ever on his live broadcast at like noon today, Central Standard Time, over a thousand people. And as I'm listening to him I'm like this dude was made to speak in front of people. Like he's not animated. Like I got turn people off. I get real raw and animated. You know, he's just, his voice is just so soothing and he's so intelligent. <laughs> I just, I, people like that, I look at, I'm like, I, I really, I look up to people like that. I, I'm grateful that I have a friend like that and I get to listen to his wisdom. And even, and the thing, beautiful thing is like, I've gotten comments from people saying, you know, you guys have conversations. You guys, now that I've gotten to know the both of you, you don't have the same beliefs. We don't. But you see, we respect one another. And that, this is the way it should be. He does him. I do me. And we have a beautiful life, man. We have a beautiful friendship. Soul brothers, man. So big shout out to him. I hope you checked out his live. He had, he had more pearls of wisdom today. Broke a thousand. So big shout out to Waters Above um, and all, all he's done for humanity. He's changing people's lives and I'm grateful that I got that guy as a friend. Um, I've had a, a lot of things happen in the past two weeks. A big shout out to all my Patreons. Those of you that have, you know, that have supported and pledged to my Patreon uh, Decode Your Reality. Right? You, don't, you don't have to do it, folks. Like, it's, I'm not forcing people to do it. It supports my mission, right? It helps. So if you have done that, thank you so very much. Honestly, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And even if you're not, that's okay. Thank you for sub supporting Decode Your Reality. You know, we're closing in on 40,000 members. I mean, I'm grateful for that. I'm at a point in my life, man, you know, like you, you know how I roll, ladies and gentlemen, if you're here, you know how I roll. Gratitude junkie. Gratitude central is where it's at. Gratitude is the number one emotion that we should all have. That's above everything. I think it's f flat out above every other emotion is gratitude. Um, just talked to Jason Brashears yesterday and today, um, and we, we're going to do another podcast. We're going to do round two 
between me, him, and, and Jordan. We had such a great response on the first one. And a lot of people have been asking us to do another one. So we're going to try to get this thing coordinated before the, uh, the errant uh, San Diego event uh, next month. So I'm really looking forward. I know there's still some tickets available, uh, very few. Talk to Jason about it. So if you're on the fence, if you can get to San Diego, it's the, 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 um, the event is actually it's, it's at Adams Theater. And it's just like 10 minutes from the airport. So it'd be great to meet some of you. One of, the, one of the main reasons why I'm going is just to meet people. Just to meet some of you. Shake hands, talk to you, answer questions, just hang out, you know? So it'll be fun. Uh, we each get like, I don't know, 45 minutes of talk time on stage and I guess there's a panel between, with all the speakers, uh, we all get to join in a panel at the end of the day or end of the night on Saturday. I don't know how it's going to work. And we're going to do Q&A, and that should be fun. Um, and I'll be the black sheep, of course, <laughs> of the whole bunch, I'm sure. Uh, anyways, the black sheep of the black sheep. Um, so a big shout-out to uh, Archaics uh, and, and, um, and Jason Bashirs. Uh, I wanted to give a big shout-out to... Um, a newly found friend of mine, who we, we, I feel like he's a brother of mine already. We quickly, his name's Greg Reese, and uh, I, I did a podcast with him. He invited me to do his podcast just a few weeks ago. Um, I got an email from him, and I, I didn't recognize the name, but then when I went to go listen to his work, I recognized the voice. Um, and he's, you know, he's he work he 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 produces videos for Infowars now. I know some of you, oh, Alex Jones, info. So, there you go, judging, right? So just to step back a little bit, right? And if you know Greg Reese, who he is now is not who he was two, three years ago. And he's got to, I got to do a reading for him. Dynamic code, this guy. So I was really uh, impressed. I was really impressed with what he's doing how he is rolling with his mindset, his DNA activation upgrades. This is what, you know, as, as you all know, for the past few months, I've been doing these tarot at the end of the night and they've been saying that the energy coming in is this DNA activation upgrade. So what I'm gonna show you tonight um, is the astrological chart for the month of December coming up. The reason why I wanna show that is because this is when Rahu and Ketu, the axis of the dragon's head, and the dragon's tail, they move into a brand new um, nashatra and sign. And that's going to be big changes for the world as a whole. And like, what would you do as a strategy um, when these energies come in? So I'm going to be showing that. Uh, and what I feel, there's some pretty big things that I think could be coming um, with, this, with this new change. Exciting, right? Uh, I got to talk to Santos called him up about three days ago. I, a lot of people had like, hey, did you just watch Santos's video on September 23rd? Which, you know, today is September 23rd. We're still here, nothing happened. Uh, that, that, I don't like to do predictions, um, but of course there is something happening always. We just may not feel the effect of the cause of what's going on. Um, and, you know, his knowledge is so vast and the value that he brought with that video, um, which, you know, he's spot on because September is when you have the, the equinox come in and that's, you know, one of the four quadrants of the Zodiac. And this is the fall of man. This is when the sun starts to lose its life. It starts to go down below the horizon or move whatever you want to flat earth. It moves away round. It goes down below, whatever. It doesn't matter. I could care less, but the sun disappears. We, we, we can all agree upon that. And that's what happens during the fall time. The sun goes into the underworld. And this is where you're going to get, you know, now the energy of the, the devil, the fallen angel story, the darkness set, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it happens every year, right? 923 happens every year. It happened last year, the year before, you know. Uh, predictions are really challenging to do. Of course, 923 falls on a Saturday. So is there something that's going to happen on the opening bell on Monday? Maybe. See, I don't keep up with the mainstream. I get people send me stuff. I honestly purposely don't pay attention to it. Don't care. 
I don't. I just don't care. It doesn't. I, I don't. I. It, it, my life has gone up, up, up in the essence of bliss and solace ever since I got rid of the news. And when I do look at it, I look at it like I'm watching a show or a movie. That's the impact it has. And even now, I consciously see myself when I watch a show. You know, I'm watching people get shot and killed, and you know, shot gunshot to the head, and just like it's not even real. It's just all acting. Like I'm. That's why I'm consciously in the moment. I'm not reacting to it. I'm just sitting there watching gunfights and I'm like, yeah, these people are just falling on the ground. They're faking it. That's, that's, that's where my mentality is. Um, so there's uh, a little bit. I, I just released on the Patreon as the premiere. It's going to be released on YouTube at some point on The Beast. So if you want to see it now, the, the luxury of being a member, you get to get all the sneak peeks. The, this, this one, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I have identified the beast. What is the beast above? What is the beast below? And there are, you know, the beast below is man. The beast above is the Stargate, which is the astrological map. And I broke it all down with that decoder. It was like uh, an hour long presentation profound information using math undeniable presence with mathematics golden ratio numerology alchemy tarot etc etc blending them all together to show once again like what is the beast the great beast has everything to do with theology ladies and gentlemen that's the, I'll, I'll give you the hint the 12 apostles in jesus that's the beast i know some of you are like oh no way that can't be no 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 that can't okay fine see i don't rely on interpretation I'm not that guy. I'm a researcher. I'm a scientist. I, I, I dive into the, the code. And when you realize how this reality works, this reality works on a code. Like if you're an HTML coder, if you make software, like right now you're on YouTube watching this transmission. Well, YouTube has a code written in order for you to watch and observe me and speak. And in order for this to broadcast, there's an HTML code that's wrapped behind this. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. There's a code behind you. Your two base pairs of your DNA is code. And it can all be broken down to numbers, letters, and symbols. That is a one plus one equals two fact. That is not my opinion. That is a fact. That is the foundation I use as a researcher. Not, well... God says this, and Jesus said that, and Muhammad said this, and anybody can say anything. Anybody can say anything, folks. So, that's what I got. So let's, I'm going to be looking to my right again. This is where my screen is, with all you great decoders, all the comments coming in. Got my tools. My cards, my tarot. I haven't got my new. I haven't got a medicine deck yet. I'm probably going to pick another one up when I go back to uh, San Diego next month. <clears throat> Today being the Ace of Clubs Day, September 23rd, which converts into the 23rd card in the deck, the Ace of Wands. This card right here is the, is, you see that card right there, folks? This is the Harry Potter card. This is the abracadabra. See that hand holding the wand? That's the Hollywood stick. If you watched my Hollywood decoded, I showed this clearly with the connections that were undeniable. This is what the G-O-D uses to do its bidding here in this reality, to create the magic, to keep you engaged, to keep me engaged, to keep us engaged. Okay, so let's check out some of your comments. Ponzi scheme, flip mode 007, yes. Ponzi scheme is 53, 53 is Yeshua, 53 is iodine, iodine is the I, and there's the I right on the card. It's the magic wand. I, I in the sky, the I of providence.
Joe Star is asking about, did I see the comet named Child that moves into the womb of Virgo today? Um, yes. Somebody sent me that information. We'll see what happens. You know, there's always a lot of activity going on in the stars. Um... King of Light, what's up, brother? How are you? I hope you're doing great. Where are you at in the world? Thanks for the uh, feedback on... I just released 222. All of you hopefully have seen that one. That would, the, the rating on that was through the roof. Thanks, everybody, for supporting that. Probably didn't expect the, what I showed. What does the 222 mean? Check it out. You'll, you'll find out. So Oldies is asking, can you decode my birthday? Well, <laughs> then I would have to decode everybody's birthday. It's so it's like, if I do you, then I got to do everybody. So the best thing you can do, I'm going to, I'm going to send you the website to go. Actually, let me see if it's even open. I don't know if Sharon, her website was down. Let's see. Oh, okay. Let me, I'll give it to you. Hang on a second. There you go. All right, you're gonna have to check out the chat. So this is for oldies Afghan. The website's down, but there's a way to manipulate it. There you go. So the last post, that's your card, the Jack of Clubs, okay? What are the Jesus cards? I got a decode coming out. The title is called Jack Jesus. Jesus is the jack, the knight. That's why Jesus says, I'm not coming with peace. I'm coming with a sword. That's what he says. I should tell you loud and clear. That's why I'm saying you, <laughs> people think, man, it's, okay, yeah, Jesus is that beautiful, put my arm around you. Let me just take you off into the promised land. Take all your troubles away. Uh, there you go. This card right here. This was in my The Beast Decoded. This is the Jack, the Knight. Jack of Spades. See all the battle gear? Jesus says, I'm coming with a sword. See that sword? See, this is the Knight. This is the Jack. Jack and Jesus start with the letter J. Is there a correlation between a tarot card and a character in the Bible? The answer is yes. Just showed it to you. Maurice Hernandez, how do we view the Beast Decode video? It is only for Patreons, that decode. Right now, it's it, it's going to come out in the general public. I just haven't figured out when I'm going to release that. One of the advantages of becoming a member is you get to see premieres. And there's also videos on the Patreon that you will not find on YouTube. I'm not here to entice you. I'm not trying to sell you anything. If you want to, it's to support this research. Like I put out videos free for five years. And then people get butthurt and they get angry at me because I want to have a Patreon. I, I, I'm like, okay, you, I guess... You just want me to continue to... Anyway, I'm not going to... This is my livelihood, folks. It's all I do. I sit, in my, I, I sit in this chair and I decode for 10, 12 hours a day. That's my life. That's my service to humanity, amongst other things. Doing these... How many jacks to make Jesus when Jesus, is, Jesus isn't jacked? Jesus is the jack. 
The jack is the knight that goes into battle, that attacks. See, the, the card that represents the love of Christ, the love, let me show you. Actually, let me see if I can pull it up. Hold on. Uh, where are you at? I have so many decodes coming. I got the Pyramid of Khufu. I have some special information on this one. Folks, this one, uh, groundbreaking material. That's all I'm going to say on the Khufu. The Great Pyramid of Khufu. Groundbreaking with mathematics. Stuff you've never... I was, my jaw was on the floor doing this deal. Like I, I had the, one of the greatest nights of research a few nights ago. I was decoding the pyramid. And it was promulgated by Santos's 923 video. It's in there. I got Lake of Fire. I have Judas Betray. I have Jack Jesus. I have Hitler. I have Game Over. Sad But True. Spit You Out. I have Nikolai Tesla coming out and brand new material on that. The Dead Rabbit. The Law One. Two Tickets to Paradise. Recycled. Every Breath You Take. I got the Cross Decoded coming out. I got CERN Decoded coming out. I have so many. Ride the lightning. I have so many decodes that are, uh, that are going to be coming out. Some will be on public YouTube on this channel, and then some will be on the Patreon that you will not get on YouTube. Um, but let me show you. Oh, here it is, Jack Jesus. I'll show you um, the correlation of... The jacks and this is i'll just show you like so, some of you like the english right the english and chaldean are you know brother sister because they both work off the number eight there are 26 letters of the english alphabet two plus six is eight and there you go okay um so let me just show you real quick what this looks like see these this is jesus the jack right here all the jacks, okay? And when you, when you say them in numer whoops, when you say them in numerology, it's using the English now. I got the Chaldean as well, but it's 371, which is a permutation of the 137, and there's the 33. You think this is an accident? That, that the Christ story was crucified at 33? You think this is just purely coincidental? When I can take numerology and combine it with the mathematics with the cards of illumination that were came out around the 13th to 14th century. The typical deck of playing cards. People play with them at casinos. Right there. It's, it's Jack Jesus. Jesus the Jack. That's why Jesus starts with the letter J and the J has the red on the Jack, folks. It's right there, man. Can't miss it. <laughs> so much. Look at all these slides I got down here. They're all ready to go. I have so many, I have so much damn material, ladies and gentlemen, that I haven't even put out yet. I literally have hundreds of decodes. I, I have it saved in, I got like five external hard drives filled with decodes I haven't even done yet. I just like find one and then I finish it and then I go, then I'm on, then something else shows to me and then I go on to that and it's, a, it's a relentless. Whatever is using me, it's just relentless. <clears throat> have i decoded rh negative um i ha if you watch my bloodline decoded i covered that i covered the blood types um you know the rh factor you're either going to have the rh factor or you're not right but the one thing that you will be tied to are one of the four blood types whether you're rh negative or positive that's going to be an additional layer to your blood. You're going to be O, A, B, or AB. Every single one of you is going to be one of those four, besides the additional RH factor. It just so happens there are four blood types. Go watch my four decoded. The word four equals 23 in numerology the same exact word as blood the same exact outcome as blood is that a coincidence blood is 23 four is 23 there are four blood types coincidence no 
See, because you come down, and what's for the cube? You come to, you're in the cube, squaring the circle. You're in it. You're cube down here. That's why there are four seasons. There are, that's why there are north, south, east, and west. These are not coincidences, ladies. You know, this all supports the narrative, four blood types. Okay. What's up, TJ? Yeah, th thanks for the thanks everybody for choosing like what your favorite decodes are. I'm sure everybody has some variations in there. I definitely would encourage all of you to go watch Superstar Part One, Part Two, and Part Three because it's coming again around to the sun. The information is just all leading back to the sun, Helios. You know, it's not a coincidence that in Greek. The sun was called Helios, and in the Greek spelling from the numerology, it's a match to Jesus, which is Jesus in the Greek. Jesus is 24, Helios is 24. Why is that a match directly? They're both 24s. Why are there 24 hours in a day? More and more of this information is leading to the sun being Jesus. I mean, I had it pegged there for a long time. And then I'm, I'm still questioning, like, what about the moon? Well, the, the moon is the consort of the sun. The moon is the sun at night. Solar return versus solar progressive chart. Uh, I, 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 I simplify my life. If you've gotten a reading from me, you know that I, I use Vedic sidereal and tropical Western, and I sprinkle in Chinese there as well on top of it. Uh, you can get it. There's the D1, the D2, the D3, the D4, the D9 for love, the D10. The, Folks, the, 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 there's like, you, you, then you got the draconian, then you, it's like your mind will freaking explode. I go back to the basics. The, the truth is in the basics. Like you get, you find all the answers in the basics. So those are, that's the system I use. And then I have my methodology. I take tarot cards. I take the cards of illumination. I take your numerology. I take your human design and I plop it all into your astrological charts and we synchronize it all together. And the outcome is just mind blowing. Like, if you've gotten a reading, man, like I do readings to people, I'm like, do you even realize what you got as a human being? Do you realize the freaking code you got? Some people can't grasp that because they're like, well, what about everybody else? Who gives a shit about anybody else? What about you? And you, you're on a pedestal. Like, it's you against you in the world. You realize what you got? Are you actually doing what you got as a code? <clears throat> And a big shout out to my, uh, and big shout out to Pamela Swan and his, his, uh, St oh, Stephen's here too. Moderators, Stephen and Pamela. Sending you guys a ton of love. Appreciate you all for being here. The wrenches, the, they're, they're loving wrenches though. <laughs> all right. What's up, Rodney? Thanks for the support. And I've gotten some of you that just like you, like, I don't, I don't know, do you work? Do you, like, some people just watch video after video of mine and are like, wow, like, uh, I'm like, what do you do for a living? Because <laughs> they're like constantly watching um, all my videos. I'm like, wow, okay. I need to go, I go back and watch some of the videos that I put out. I'm like, damn, I forgot all that. I forgot this, I forgot that. It's just so much. TJ is asking, can you do that Ra into Horus on math numbers? I, I'm not sure what you mean by that. 
Sun gazing is great. Margaret's asking, can you please explain the connection of 37 and 73? Well, they're, they're mirrors of one another. So this is just like, if you, if you just use that, you have 21 and 12, 13 and 31, 41 and 14, 15 and 51. These are mirrors of one another, right? And then you can look to see if they're prime, right? You can look to see if they're prime numbers. And that's going to be important. 367 is the 73rd prime number. 59 is the 17th prime number. And you just try to look to see if the both numbers that are mirrored are prime numbers. And then you got to attach that to something. As many layers as you can attach to your outcomes, the better off you're going to be. See, if you're just sticking, like when I first started decoding, I was just connecting words to words. And that gets a little messy because you'll find when you start doing that, a lot of words have the same outcomes as a lot of words. And you get all excited at first. Oh my God, I found a match. And then like now when I find these matches, I'm just like, meh, I get that meh because it can go so many different ways. Or when you attach a card, alchemy, sine and cosine wave, the fingerprint of the number. Now you got some ingredients to work with. Now you have a more defined layer of the source code because the source code, whatever's running this reality, it is multifaceted. It's not as easy as this word is the same as that word in numerology or what some people like to call gematria. It's, it's not that easy. It's not that simple. You got to add in other layers to get a, a real definitive Why was Jesus a carpenter? Because Jesus is a builder. He's a builder. Why is a mason a builder? Why is a, why is a Freemason considered a builder? What is a mason? They, they build things, just like a carpenter builds things. Is there any connection between the two? Of course there is. Carpenter builds things. Brown Bird's asking about, can you speak about the flower of life? I've decoded the flower of life twice. So if you go look in my catalog of videos, you type in flower of life, you're going to find two videos on that. So I definitely highly encourage you to go look at that. That'll give you all of the decoding nuggets that I came up with. I mean, there's so many other ones. Um, I haven't looked into the, the, the God seed uh, and the Fibonacci spiral. That's going to correlate a little, bit of, a little bit to the golden ratio. The crystal spiral I haven't looked into. So I couldn't give you any information on that. Why no super chats? I don't monetize my channel here on YouTube. Why do I not monetize my channel? Because I don't like commercials. The main reason why I don't monetize this is because I don't like commercials. I'll give you an example. You're in the middle of an amazing discussion between two people that you really look up to. And then all of a sudden you get this five second, 10 second commercial slapped in your face. Right when they're in the heat of the discussion. You're like, ugh. It irritating. So I didn't want to subject my viewers, my family, all you great decoder. I didn't want to subject you to that. So I decided that I didn't want to do that. I didn't want it. So there, there I took that off the board. But thank you so much for the thought. You know, um, I appreciate that. My, my, like my, people say, well, how do we, how do we donate? Like go to the Patreon. That's a way to support. I mean, you're getting videos that you're not going to get on YouTube. Some of them are, they're, you know, the premiere videos. You're getting those before anybody else that gets to see them. And then you have videos on there that you won't find on YouTube at all. The only time you'll see a, a, an advertisement on this channel is if a artist that I use for me, like I like to, 
I like to use a lot of different artists. I give credit. I tell them to, I always try to strive to support the, the artists. I make sure I put the links there. But if there's ever an ad on my channel, it's because the artists that I used, they decided they wanted to monetize it. So if there's anything in the future, there's nothing I can do about that. Like the Eric Pride's, you know, adult, uh, um, Pink Floyd remix that I played in the beginning. If Eric Prides ever decides to monetize that piece, I'm sure that he can do that. He can slap a commercial on here and he can make money off of it. But that's the risk I take. <sighs> Decode the lottery. I've, I've had a few people ask me that. I'm just not, like, I'll, I'll give you an answer. I'm just not interested in, in decoding the lottery. I'm just no interest. One of the reasons why is, you know, from as far back as I can remember, when I, like, gambling, right? And I've never been a big gambler. The reason why I've never been a big gambler it's for whatever my code is, it, it's, I, wasn't, I didn't get the code of winning. I've only won a few times that I can even remember, and it wasn't even that much. I would end up putting money in, and I wouldn't get anything in return. And then I had read in my code. You know, part of my code, it just some, some opinions in the code says, you know, you're better off not doing that. And then, of course, the trying to gamble and I just it didn't work out didn't work out didn't work out so there's that MRT very interesting question how to love yourself make the decision to do it there, there's no competition in this reality except for you Scott Duffy says look in the mirror that's your competition all right? Look in the mirror, that's your competition. So when you look in the mirror, do you like what you see? If you don't like what you see, then you gotta do some shadow work. You should look in the mirror, if, and if you don't like what you see, then make lemonade out of that. Like, oh yeah, I gotta lose 50 pounds. Then, okay, then we'll get off your ass and go do it. If that's what's gonna make you love yourself, some people need to go do that. Part of their code, like they, they, they have to address the physical. So the very first requisite to love yourself, make the decision to do it. Study yourself. Once you realize how amazing you are, once you realize you're a superhero, once you look at your code and you're like, damn. Like when I do a reading for somebody, I'm, I'm like, I, can, I don't ever compare a chart to anybody else's chart. Sometimes we'll have similarities, yes. But it's just you against you. That's it. There's no competition. So how to love yourself? Realize that it's just you against you. So you're creating all these facades in your life. Like, and I get it. A lot of it is shadow work. A lot of it is programming. For when you came into this world, maybe, you know, the way you were raised, you were told that you were no good. And those are all false attributes. Those aren't even real. Those aren't even true. And they, they play, they play no homage to you right now. What matters is, is how do you, what's going on now? That's why the reading is so valuable. Decoding yourself so valuable because it strips away all the bullshit layers of somebody else coding you. I, I often say this when I'm doing a reading for somebody. I'm like, if I take your parents' chart, their astrological chart, I look at their birthday, I look at their birth card, 99.9% of, .9 of the time, it doesn't even look like your chart. But yet they raised you based on their chart. So there's a mixture of code in there as a child. And as a child, like they say, you know, we're supposedly programmed from the ages of two and 14. That's a big chunk of your life that programs you as now it as an adult. So a large portion of how you function is based off of the ages of two and 14. Well, when you were two to 14, you had somebody telling you, don't do this, do that. Make sure you do it this way. And it's all just like passing the torch. And a lot of it is what I call, it's, you know, it's a like coding that doesn't match up with your code. You can call it faulty. I don't like using that word, but it's just code that's not useful for you. But yet you use it because you don't know any better because you were programmed between the ages of two and 14 and you've just rolled with it your whole life. 
That's why if you start to look at your parents, you do a lot of the things your parents do. And if those of you are like, oh, no way, because it's something they did, you, you hated it. And the very reason why you went the other way is because you saw what they did and you said, I'm never going to do that. And that allowed you to make lemonade out of your life. Some of you watched an alcoholic parent growing up and you've never touched alcohol. Well, that's, see, that's a blessing, right? That's a blessing because in, in order for you to be someone who's never touched alcohol, you needed to see somebody who was damaged with it and that you made lemonade out of. That's something you should be grateful for. Nothing goes to waste in this reality, ladies and gentlemen. Everything that happens to you doesn't go to waste. You will use it to some degree. And it's usually the things that we consider bad that really change the fabric of our life. Not the good things, the bad things. The things you get burned on. That's what changes the course of your life. What's on a royal flush? I mean, it's a. You could take the cards probably and do that. It's an interesting question. I've never looked at the cards and card hands, and um, maybe I'll remember to do that. But I would do the numerology of the cards and see what happens, what the outcomes would be. So Zeno D. Logan thoughts on Shiva. AKA Mother Spider, AKA Mother Weaver, AKA Carly. Well, Shiva most definitely is tied to Earth, right? It's Shiva kind of is the ruler of Earth. And the preserver, Vishnu, is the ruler of heaven. And somewhere in between there, you're going to get Brahma. Um, now that you've asked that question, let me, um, let me go to a sneak peek and let me see if I can find it. Okay. All right. You ready for the two big bombs? Two, two big ones that I, I don't think anybody's ever shown before. And I'm not saying that to boast. I'm just saying this is how big of a deal it was for me to find it. I, I, didn't, I don't take any credit for this. The voice in my head, whatever's, whatever that's attached to, that gets the credit. You can call it God, supernatural, whatever. Okay? I talk to it all the time. Been doing it my whole life. To me, God is nameless. There's no name you can put to the creator. You can't put a name to it. All right, let me just show you now. Here we go. So I got this deco come. This one, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be some of the most important information to ever come out on the Great Pyramid. I think so. I know there's been a lot of great mathematicians. There's been a lot of people that have broken it down, showing the amazing layers of the pyramid. It's endless. These things, and, you know, obviously I have Caffrey highlighted. It's going to be Khufu's here, but, you know, Caffrey being the center pyramid, it's really going to be the biggest pyramid. It's, it's Khufu, but, you know, Caffrey has the gold uh, on top, which I kind of highlighted. Um, but, you know, I have said so many times that, I think these create our reality in a lot of ways. And if, and I'm not encouraging this, right? But if these things were to, to be taken out and removed, I think the fabric of our, re, of our reality would change in a big way. So what I want to show you first is the latitude, longitude, and how that lines up with the cards of illumination. Now, remember, these came out in the 13th, 14th century, but yet I'm going to correlate them to the pyramids and just then we say, how old are they? So it's 29 degrees north, 31 degrees east. And remember, the speed of light is right there in kilometers. 
And then you have the conversion of pi right here. So the latitude of the Pyramid of Giza is the golden ratio and the speed of light. And then the longitude running across is going to be pi, which is going to represent Earth. So I'm the big humdinger is the 29 here, the latitude, because the energy comes down. This is light coming down to the pyramid, down from the heavens, north. So this is going to be solar spread 29. Every year, these cards, for the most part, there are a few years that they don't change. These move around. These cards all move spaces. And these spaces are all numbered like a bingo chart. Here's the boilerplate chart for it, the numbers. So we start here in the bottom right for square number one, and it goes from right to left, and we get to 52. And we know that because the king of spades is the unmovable card 52. Okay? So... What I wanted to look at is when you add up 29 and 31, that's going to give you a total of 60. Okay, 60. And because the energy coming down into the pyramid is 29, I decided to look at solar spread 29. And I, I'm going to, I can show you it's solar spread 60. But where is the 25 and 35 on here? To give us the 60, it's going to be these two cards right here. And you're saying, well, what, why, why the 25 and 35? Well, I'm being a little premature. I have to show you some other slides. I'm not going to show you those. But I'm going to tell you right now. You'll have to take my word for it. See, this eight of clubs is going to be the entrance to the Great Pyramid. This one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. The eight of hearts. Excuse me. The eight of hearts is the entrance to the Great Pyramid right here. And then the Eight of Clubs is going to represent the base of the pyramid. And you have the 88 right there. Okay? This is how the cards work. And I just want to show you the Eight of Hearts is going to be at the tip of this pyramid at the, at the top. And if you go to the tarot, the card that shows you the picture, it's this one. This is what it means to be light into matter right here this card right here represents the entrance to pierce the veil to get into this reality the latitude north the 29 degrees north is the eight of hearts the eight of cups and this card is spiritual journey spirit leaving the spiritual realm and going into matter light into matter 44 is tied to the word underworld the word underworld is 44. Plutonium is 44. And plutonium is Pluto, which is Shiva. And Shiva is the ruler of the base of the pyramid. And then you have the eight of wands, which is the entrance to the underworld. And then you have the demiurge here. The eight of, eight of wands. That's, that's, what, that's what Khufu looks like. Where is my... With these two right here. Now, backing up. Here's the last slide I'm going to show you with this one for a sneak peek of the pyramid. This one blew my mind. So I, did, I looked at, I'm like, what's the base foundation for the pyramid? Well, besides the mortar, it's made of limestone and granite. Limestone and granite. Here is the chemical composition of limestone. It's called calcium carbonate. And then here is the chemical formula or what they call the molar mass of silicon dioxide, which is granite, which is quartz crystal. You go over to the trusty calculator, ladies and gentlemen, and you add up the molar masses and look at what number you get. You get the freaking golden ratio. And you have raw on the back end of the decimal, the 88. You get time travel right there. So you get the representation of light and you have time travel and Ra, which is the sun on the back end. Found from the two biggest contributors of what makes the fabric of this thing work. Coincidence? Here's the formulas. Calcium carbonate is limestone. One calcium, one carbon, three oxygens right there. And then silicon dioxide, which is granite, it's silicon and two oxygens. And there's the outcome. And you mean to tell me it's the damn golden ratio? Come on. Really? 
This is how dialed in this structure is. Amazing, if you ask me. I don't think anybody has ever shown it before, but again, I'm not, I'm not taking any credit for this. Whatever is using me is using me to show you this information. So I take no credit, none, zilcho. So there's that, which was a big, that's a big one. That's not even the biggest slide of the, all of the stuff. That's a big one, but I have more bigger information. Groundbreaking material. I'm hoping that we'll shake the tree of these people that are invested in the Great Pyramid and wanting to break it down and go further with it. I'm going to show you the cards, alchemy, mathematics, the golden ratio, all that, how it ties into the pyramids, how pi ties, like it's never been shown before, and it completely blew my mind. Three nights ago, I had the, one of the greatest nights of research. It was a re unbelievable. And a big shout out to Santos because Santos kind of promulgated me to look at the date. Somebody had said, hey, did you see Santos' video? I'm like, no. So I went and watched a little bit of it and it's 923. And yeah, what's well, the 266, 267th day of the year, 923 is. And I knew what it meant. Fits right into the pyramid. Wait till you see it. It's just so glorious. Wow. So I don't know how these people back then, like these elements on the periodic table, they didn't even exist back then, supposedly. A lot of these weren't even discovered until the 1700s, 1800s. I know that it could be docked up. I know that the technology could exist. I know these elements could have existed a long time ago. But I'm just going off of what I can see, what I can read. That's all I can go off of. I don't have the, like Jason Bashir's obviously well-versed in history. That's why I can't wait to go meet him next month because I'm going to chalk it up with him on these dates and numbers and see what he's got to see what it, how it correlates to this research. Can you please decode Leo? Well, Leo is the fifth sign. Leo is ruled by the sun. Leo's element is boron. Boron has five protons and its isotope is 11. And that's the 511. And it's interesting because Leo is the fifth house and the opposite of Leo is Aquarius, which is the 11th house. Leo represents the pride. Leo represents spirit into matter. That's what Leo represents. Spirit into matter. It's five. When you look at the tarot card for Leo, one of them, because there are six, each zodiac sign has six tarot cards attached to it. There are going to be six cards in the middle representing the, the, bull, the bullseye, and then there's going to be six in the first house all the way through the 12th house. Six cards for each sign that wrap all the way around. And the major arcana card is the, the hierophant. So just check this out, right? You're asking about Leo. If you, all of you are going to have Leo energy. It's the guru. This, this card right here, the, this, it's called the hierophant. It means guru. Well, who's the guru? The sun. See, that's why this characters, they've decided right or wait, and when they created this in early 1900s, they gave the nod to the sun in human form to the Pope. This is the Pope on the card. They decided that the Pope would, have, would be the sun in, in, in human form. That's why Leo's ruled by the sun. It's just so easy to see. Very, very easy to see. <clears throat> Are there plans for a green box detox? I was just thinking about when I want to do another one. I probably will do another one, green box detox three, uh, it, after I get back from San Diego. <clears throat> K 
Capricorn is the 10th sign. Capricorn is going to be the Wheel of Fortune card and the element for Capricorn, Saturn, is going to be the element neon. The numbers for neon are 10 and 20. 10, the protons, 20 for the isotope. 19.99 is the uh, most abundant. It's going to round up to the number 20. So 19 and 20, and then the number 10 protons for Capricorn. Capricorn being Kronos, Kronos being the timekeeper. That's why the Wheel of Fortune card is the card that represents Kronos. Now, you know, there's a little bit of a variation in my, well, there's a lot of variation in the way I look at um, the, the card that most people attribute the devil to, right? This one. When you, when, you, when you go watch a tarot reader online, or you're going to get a lot of what I call regurgitation. And we all do it, right? We all take an opinion and we'll spin it our own way and we'll say, yeah, well, one plus one equals two. That's kind of regurgitation, but it's one plus one equals two. So what are you going to say? But you'll, you'll get a lot of people say, this is a Capricorn card. And I totally emphatically disagree. Because this card right here sits in the house of Taurus. Why do I say that? Well, because card 13, which is the death card, sits in the very middle of the chart. 12 is the hangman. 13 is in the very center. And then where does 14 go? Back out to Aries. So naturally, what is after 14? 15, which is this, which is the house of Taurus. Tor does Taurus have two horns? Well, they're right there on the devil. Taurus is ruled by Venus. How did you get here? Each and every one of you. Through the womb. That's Venus. The Aphrodite. Love, sex, lust, procreation. The ovaries, the testes. That's Taurus energy. That is not Capricorn energy. So the devil is sex. That ain't Capricorn, folks. That is Taurus energy. Straight up. Okay. Yeah, San Diego's still a go. I just talked to Jason Bashir's tonight and yesterday. Uh, so, 21st, next, uh, the, the 21st of October. Uh, is the shindig, man. It is the, the errant San Diego. And uh, it's a whole day. Um, I, I offered to... Now, I only get to speak for... I, I think Jason said, if I'm lucky, 45 minutes because there's just so much going on, right? Whatever, I don't care. It's totally fine. Um, but I'm, I'm not just going to leave the rest of the day. I'm going to set up... I, they gave me a little... Everybody gets a booth. So we all have like a six foot table and I invited Donut, if you're a fan of Donut's work, I invited him to be part of my booth. I haven't met him yet in person. So I offered, I'm like, hey dude, you just wanna, you wanna come hang out at my booth? It'd be kind of cool, right? So he said, yeah. So he's coming from Arizona. He's supposed to be coming out and if he does, he's gonna be sharing my booth with me. So I'm gonna maybe get some tapestry with the, you know, with the, with the logo here so you can see it really easily. I'm gonna try to do something so you can recognize our booth. And then, you know, I probably do tarot reading. I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do yet. And then we had, there's a panel at the end of the night where we all get to go up and do questions and answers, I guess. I don't know. That's the structure for the thing. So if you want to come out, man, there's, there's still a few tickets left. It'd be cool to meet some of you. I mean, I talked to Jason. He's like, a lot of this has to do with getting a lot of these YouTubers together, a lot of creators and researchers, and just being able to meet people. People just want to meet people. We're coming back to the human touch, getting away from the cyber, moving back towards, you know, shaking hands and take, getting hugs and stuff like that and looking at smiles and talking to people you know so that's it's going to be cool mystic green summer have you decoded the ees system i love it i love uh i love that whole system um i did a podcast with mel mel carmine promoting check out my uh, I, I'm going to see if 
either Pamela or Stephen can grab from my uh, Cosmic Sugar because uh, it'll log me out of here. I have a Cosmic Sugar YouTube channel, and that's my health and wellness. And uh, I did a, a podcast with Mel promoting his healing center, and he's got a healing center in Cape Canaveral, Florida, right across the way from Orlando. And he's using the scalar wave technology that was designed by Dr. Sandra Michael Rose, or Sandra Rose Michael. Beautiful woman. I've been reading about this scalar wave technology for over 10 years. I read a book called Infinite Mind by Dr. Valerie Hunt. And in that book, she was talking about the technology that is now out on the world stage. And this is where you go sit in a room and you're embedded by, you're around the scalar wave technology and the technology doesn't heal you. It'll, it, it, it basically puts a cocoon around you so your body heals itself. It, it blocks everything out. That's kind of how this technology works. It blocks the environment out from away from you. And then it puts you in the space of healing. Then your body can start to heal because ladies and gentlemen, I mean, you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but your skin's constantly shedding and you have new skin coming in. Your liver is constantly regenerating. Your cells are regenerating right now at this very moment. You can cut a piece of your liver out and it re will regenerate. I don't know if you knew that or not, but that's, that's the biology of the body. Well, a large portion of who we are as human beings, the reason why we can't heal is because we're being bombarded by this and that and this and that. So this technology allows you to go into a room and it basically surrounds you with this scalar wave technology and your body ends up healing itself. And I think this is revolutionary. I personally think it's going to change the world. It's already, I mean, these, these healing centers are popping up all over the place already. So this is ground floor opportunity if you wanted to invest in a healing center and start helping the world. This is where it's going. Then you get into the med bed space. This is pre-med bed stuff here, if you've ever heard of that technology. So it's pretty badass. No, uh, is Mel going to be there? Uh, Jane's asking, I would imagine you're asking about the errant, errant meetup. I, I don't think so. He's over in Florida and he's, he just launched his center. So I know he's inundated with, um, with helping people. So I really doubt that he'll be there. Pamela or Steven, can one of you put the, uh, the link for the tickets to the errant event in San Diego? Somebody's asking. Uh, Callie Dawn is in San Diego, and she wants, to, um, she wants to get tickets. So can you put the link in there for her, and we can just pin it to the top? What's up, Maya? We're all the sun devils. Yeah. I mean, it's just all fractals. I guess the easiest way to summarize it and the very best way to summarize it is that you're God. I know that some, it's going to rub people the wrong way. This, this simplify it the best way that I can simplify it. Is you're a light being and you're being utilized by whatever created this reality. Okay, that, that's, that's the best way I can describe it. That's the only really thing that makes sense. Justin saying, can we meet you in San Diego? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get there. I'm, I'm going to make a vacation out of it. I, I used to live in San Diego, so I got friends down there. So I'm going to hang out a little bit. Um, I know that we're going to, I'm going to be hanging out with um, Jason and Max and a few other people. They're going to, he was telling me they're going to do like random videos live to put on in the channel with us just kind of doing round table talking, just improv. I'm like totally cool about that. So that's going to be fun. 
Um, I haven't done any of this stuff, so I'm kind of like chomping at the bit to get out there and just meet people besides this way. You know, so it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. And he's got, I asked him today, I was like, hey, you got any more meetups? He's like, yeah, he's got one in New York. Uh, I hope I'm not saying anything prematurely, but he's got other events lined up. Um, and then I've been asked a lot about like, what about, what about your own? Because I've been talking about going on the road, right? Doing seminars. Well, I, I will say tentatively that 2024 is the year where I will start to go on tour. Start to do, you know, seminars. And I'm going to be wanting to join forces. Up my, I think my very first one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to connect with a really, really close friend of mine. Her name is Tasha Cooney. She's a, an amazing life strategist. She's a professional videographer. She's shot over a thousand seminars. She's been, that's how I met her. I met her in the seminar business, doing seminars. And she's been around some big, big names, like big names. If you've seen them on stage, she's probably been there and shot it. And um, when I decided I wanted to do seminars a long time ago, before I even got into decoding, she, her and I were like, yeah, we're going to do something together. It was just like a wild dream. And then I just told her not too long ago, I'm like, hey, you know what? Next year I'm, I'm launching, I'm going out. And I said, it would be great to do one together. She said, yeah, let's do it. And she, this woman is like, man, everybody loves her. And she's just like, she's got so much energy. She's always bouncing around and she's just amazing. Um, and she's got great stories and she's a motivator changes lives and i thought maybe the first one would be great to do it with her so that's the tentative plan 2024 uh and then we just we're going to figure out where and then it's going to it's going to be tour time so that'll be fun i'll be coming to the east coast for sure chicago i love chicago Guys get the best pizza, man. Well, what's, well, that's the big incentive. <laughs> My favorite pizza is in Chicago. I'm a deep dish kind of guy. I, I like it better than, no offense to the East Coast. I love all pizza. That's my favorite food. But Chicago just has that. Oh, amazing. Yeah, I know where Carlsbad is. I used to live in... Um, I used to live in San Diego. I used to live right off of Nobel and UTC. So if you know where that's at, I'm sure you do. Right by the big, uh, <laughs> by the big church, by the big uh, Latter-day Saint church. Really beautiful one too. I don't surf. Jesse's asking, besides setting up goals and working each day towards them, how can I maximize my potential? You got to know what your strengths and weaknesses are. Again, ladies and gentlemen, life is a strategy, right? Whether you, like, a lot of people say, what's the point then? What's the point if it's all scripted? Well, if you're just going to behave like that, man, you might as well just, you know, go sit in a cave. Go make paintings in caves for the rest of your life. If you're going to be like that. The, the whole point of life is strategy. So you figure out first, like, what, how do you operate in life? I, I use this analogy a lot, right? I'll, I'll, get, I'll share it with all of you. A lot of you are like a brand new car that has a turbocharger on it, but you never get on the gas on the freeway and you never test the turbocharger out. Ever. You just putt around town and you just go 30 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour. You never open it up on the freeway. That poor turbocharger that's just screaming at you, please go hit the gas so I can show you what I'm made of. That's your personality screaming at you to put it into action. And you're not because you don't know how you operate. You don't know your strengths. You don't know your weaknesses. A lot of you are living through code of how mom and dad raised you, and that is their code, not yours. Okay? It's that simple. Once you look at your code and you see that you're a superstar and you realize, damn, man, I got, I'm the freaking, I'm a badass. 
Yeah, and you own that space. It's not ego. It's just like, okay, I'm a badass. Great, I'm a superhero. Okay, what are you going to do with it? And then you, 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 how, how did, you, how did Mozart, one of the greatest composers who I broke down in my piano decoded, they said he was composing at a very early age, single digits. You would think logically that his parents probably made him practice every day. Probably hated his parents for a long time growing up because he wanted to go out and play, but his parents were like, nope, you're inside practicing. You gotta practice today, you gotta practice today. It's like, oh my God. But the practice made him the prodigy. It was already in his DNA to be the prodigy, but he needed the practice to fulfill the obligation. That is exactly where some of you are at. You're already something in life, but you're not practicing it. You're practicing someone else's code who raised you. That just doesn't work for your code. The reason why this is the age of justice, Aquarius is the age of I know thyself, is because the veil's being lifted. You're realizing you're in a movie and you're the star of the movie. That's, one of, that's gonna be one of the big reveals. The word apocalypse just means reveal. One of the big reveals I feel is you're gonna realize that, oh, I'm in a movie? Yeah, you're in a freaking movie, hello? Why are you paying attention to their movie? Because they're marketing to you and they're using your emotions. That's what they buy, that's how you buy into their movie, with your emotions. So when you turn off their movie, they don't get your emotions anymore. And then you get to take your energy back and you get to put that into your life for you being the star. Most people don't do that. They're just happily giving away their energy to politics and religion and sports. and They're not living life. How about you? Are you living life? Can you honestly say that you're being the star of your movie? Frozen pizza is the best. That's the first time I've ever heard of that before. Am I going to do another live with Mel? Um, he hasn't contacted me, so I don't know. He's busy with his grand opening. His grand opening was is this month. Um, and I haven't talked to him uh, in, a, in a bit. So I know he's busy. Speaking of Chicago, ladies and gentlemen, and since and I was talking about this in the beginning, um, let me see if I can't do a mini on the fly, show you this, just because it was just so funny. Let me just pull it up. Hang on. Okay. So. Where is it? There it is. I'll just quickly show you this. Okay. So. We, this is what's your question 66. Why is this the famous U.S. Route 66. Why 66? Remember, anytime you ever see 66, it means Jesus. Okay? It means Jesus. 
31 degrees north, 35 degrees east. That's Bethlehem. That's 31 and 35 is 66, okay? But anyway, notice that it starts here in Chicago. It goes all the way down and it lands in Santa Monica, California. And it says here it was established on November 11th, the 11-11 day. And then it ended on June 26th, 1885. Okay. I think they opened it on the 26th, but it, they established it on the 11th. Okay. That's right, Isaac. 66 books in the Bible, too. There's a reason why Jesus was 66. Okay. But it's November 11th and June 26th. So we're going to go to the cards of illumination, the boilerplate chart, and we're going to look and find what these cards are. So here's November, and the 11th is the Nine of Clubs card right there. Okay. The Nine of Clubs card. And then it was June 26th was the ending date. And it was the right here. The, the, the closure date was the four of clubs. Okay. So we have the four of clubs and the nine of clubs. They're both clubs. The four and the nine. Well, then you go to numerology. And here are the two cities of where it starts and ends. Chicago, Illinois and Santa Monica, California. It's going to give you a 114. Notice it's 36 letters, which matches. Whoops. Ah. Okay, 36. Now, the interesting part about this, the 114, you go to alchemy now, right? Well, what's the element that has the 114? This one. The 49th element. There's the 114. What were the two cards that we said were the founding date and then the ending date for Route 66? The Nine of Clubs and the Four of Clubs, the 49. <laughs> and what's 49 when you, when you look at it in numerology? Down in a hole is 49. What's going down in the hole? Light. The Christ. Lucifer. Down in a hole, 49. So that, we found that off of freaking uh, Route 66. I have all these web things open. I can't. Right off here. The founding date. So is, was this planned that way? <laughs> uh, it's just so funny, folks. This. This is ridiculous. Like, come on. The people that plan this, they didn't plan it at that level. No way. <laughs> we live in a scripted reality. Why is it scripted this way? This is what makes the reality. This is the fat, the pro the end product is life. This, this, the phone that you have has an operating system on it. And I bet every single one of you, you probably get annoyed when it says need to update operating system. Like, ah, oh, geez, another freaking update. And the last update, like almost busted your phone. So you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to update it. It's update, 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 update. Operating system. The code changes, the code changes, the code changes. The code and the operating system allow this thing to work. When you open up and you open your screen, that's code behind the screen. The end result is the screen you're looking at, but behind the scenes to make the screen the end result, you have the code written. Well, that is exactly how our reality works. The code are these cards, which are numbers. The golden ratio is part of the code. Pi is part of the code. Latitude, longitude is part of the code. Phone number, your phone number. If you add your total phone number up, that's part of your code. The address of your house, that's part of your code. <clears throat> All of it, it's part of your code. Not my code, your code. It, it's what makes your reality your reality. It's not, and it's not mankind running the, it just, it's just not, folks. That's my final answer. 
It's something beyond mankind. I've gone back and I've reviewed so many of my decodes and it just reminds me, I'm like, it doesn't matter what beautiful story and this ancient text talks about this and the idea of this and this is going to save you. And it doesn't freaking matter because it's all predestined and scripted anyway. The whole thing. That's why I say it's, a, it's just a big joke. It's just a joke. That's what can be your final answer to ease the burden of figuring out, am I, on the right, am I doing the right thing? Am I on the right track? How do you feel about what you're doing in your life? If, you're be, if your mind is like, am I doing the right thing? Maybe you need to do more then. That's the cue. Maybe you need to go be more of a service to others. If you're questioning your ethics, maybe that's the whole cue. Maybe that's the, the God pushing you to say, are you sure you're doing enough? You're not doing it enough. And then you should take action. Most people should be like, oh, I'm not going to do anything. I'll just go turn the television on and I'll just immerse myself in the mainstream so I can escape my reality so I don't have to pay attention to what God's trying to tell me to do. That's what I'll go do. That's what a lot of people do. They drown themselves in chaos to relieve them of the burden of what the voice in their head's trying to tell them to do. They drown themselves so they can escape. That may be free will. That may be an incident of free will. Thank you, Pamela, for putting the... Let me see if I can pin that. It's so big. Okay, so I've pinned to the top of the chat. Pam was so kind enough to get the um, Eventbrite dot com tickets for the socal event in san diego so if you want to come out it's gonna be a whole day it's gonna be from nine to whatever and then i'm sure we're gonna go out to eat and go hang out and it's gonna be a whole thing Allison changed down in a hole. I've done that. Uh, that wh what a profound song. What a profound album. It comes off the album Dirt. Dirt representing the graveyard. The graveyard representing the ground you stand on, which is where you're going to end up one day. Down in a hole. Down in a Hole, and that song by Alice in Chains was written by the guitarist, and his name was Lane, I'm not Lane, his name was Jerry Cantrell. Jerry Cantrell was born on March 18th. Let me show you his birth card. <laughs> you want to talk about somebody who had a scripted reality? Jerry Cantrell did. He was born on March 18th. Jesus and the Christ are both 18. Okay? Number one. His birth card is the 31st card in the deck. Remember, let me just take you on this tour. I, I want to show it to you so you can see it. So you know I'm not just trying to, like it's so much better with visuals. So much better with visuals. Here we go. You ready, ladies and gentlemen? This is how scripted reality we have here. Ridiculous, this damn reality that we live in. It's so scripted. Here we go. Jerry Cantrell. I'm going to take you on this journey with me. Here he is. The guy who wrote down on a hole. Amazing artist. Okay? He was born on March 18th. Right there. 1966. Route 66. Jesus Christ being born at the 31, 35 degree latitude 
longitude. Here we go, Bethlehem. I'm going to take you right on this tour so you can see it with me together right there. Here's the birth city of the Christ, 31 and 35. That's 66. Jerry Cantrell, born in 1966. He was born on March 18th, and the word Jesus is the number 18 as well as the Christ. So we have a match to the guy's birthday, okay? Match to the guy's birthday. His March 18th card we go to the cards of illumination. Here it is, March. We come down to the 18th. There it is, the five of diamonds. The five of diamonds in the cards of illumination is card number 31. 31 for Jerry Cantrell. March 18th. And I go right back to Bethlehem. And what's the latitude north for Bethlehem? 31 degrees. Is that a coincidence? The guy's talking about being down, stuck in the hole. Sands rain down upon my head. Here I sit in the tomb. He says he was singing it to his girlfriend. There's multiple layers to this. So this guy right here, totally tied to Jesus Christ. Even the ridiculousness of, how about this? How about these two? Jerry, what does the mouse do? It goes in the freaking hole, man. The cat chasing the mouse. Cat is pie, 3.14. It's chasing Jerry. Jerry going down in the hole. And he's got the damn Christ card. Here's his birth card, the five of diamonds. And you know what that converts to in the tarot? Right here. The card for the game of life. The yin-yang card. This is going to be card 68 slash 69. These are going to have, always have two numbers next to them. There's the yin-yang right there. Follow the white rabbit. What's on the moon? The rabbit. And you want to, so you, 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 you think that it's maybe his parents who named him, right? Right here, Gloria Crumpos and Jerry Fulton Cantrell. Maybe they're in on the conspiracy to try to get one past you. And we're going to name him Jerry and he's born on the 18th. They're in the conspiracy. His parents are all in on it. They're Masons. They're Jesuits trying to pull one past you to get you, to mock you. That's what some people freaking think. I know I get a little excited. <laughs> That's just, that's just how I get animated, man. <laughs> On the fly, Jerry Cantrell, down on a hole. My wings have been denied. But my wings have been denied. It's just ridiculous how, how scripted our reality is. It's so scripted. And yeah, the, the thing is, is that someone who posted it on there, uh, Greg. Greg says, scripted reality is 47. That's right. It is. And guess what the 47th card is in the deck for the cards of illumination? Where the hell is it? This. 47th card in the deck. Guess, guess who's got that as their birth card? Me. I do. This is my birth card. Scripted. Re Folks, that's why I'm coming out with this material. I'm supposed to come out with this material. It's part of my job. It's part of this is my screenplay. It's not for everybody, though. See, I can, having a conversation, that's why I, I can't, I'm honestly so looking forward to going to San Diego and meeting with some of you great decoders. To have the, I, like, it's a lonely world when you live in a world where my foundation is, is, your, is your, your, your being like used like a puppet on strings. And I don't look at it as a bad thing, but people freak the hell out when I, when I talk about this. And I'm like, you, there's so much more to it than that. I can't have a normal conversation. So it's a, it's a very lonely world, folks. When, and that's, that's totally fine. I've just, I've become numb to it. Like, it's totally fine. Like, I'm not mad about it. I just make lemonade out of it.
But this is why I'm showing you this stuff. Like... Yeah, Jerry Cantrell. This was a JC. Thank you, Juez Ju Ju Rose. That's right. JC, Jesus Christ. Jerry Cantrell. Another synchronicity. So maybe his parents... Trying to get one past you. They're Jesuits. His parents are Jesuits. They're Masons. They're doing a ritual to get one past you. To try to mock you as a human being. Try to make fun of you. That's my humor, folks. That's like how that's how sarcastic I have to, that, that I am. Some people don't like it. Pamela says, Logan, your merch store. Yeah, my merchandise store right now is temporarily disabled. There wasn't any, uh, I'm just going to be authentic with all of you. Nobody was buying um, any of the merchandise. It was slow sale, so I just shut it down for now. Um, I, I'm not telling you that. I'm just being authentic. I'm being very vulnerable. I'm telling you the truth. Like, it was just slow and it wasn't worth it for me. I thought it was going to get a little bit more traction. I was really creating them to get kind of the logo out there for fun. I had some cool taglines, but whatever, it just didn't. It didn't work out, so it's all good. That's that's the reason why it's temporarily shut down. I may end, I may end up opening up again, but right now it was it was just wasn't worth it. So I'm not I'm not butthurt about it. It's totally fine. Karma Jean says, I'm constantly seeing the number 66. It's a message for you. You know, it's a message for everybody. How can, can I tell you what it is in your life? I cannot. You'd have to really be looking at the patterns of your life. You have to establish. There are requisites to figure this code out. Like if a song pops in your head, do you pay attention to it? Most people don't because they're too busy. They don't, they're not in the now moment. That is a clue for you. If you have a song pop in your head out of the clear blue and you haven't sang it in a while and you're in the conscious now moment, it is a clue, okay? It's trying to tell you something. When you're seeing numbers occur over and over, these are clues. You need to look at the time that, you're, that this number is being shown to you. Is there anything else next to it? How many times a day are you seeing it? See, being in the now moment as much as you can is going to give you more clues, but you gotta know your foundations. You gotta know as many layers of your birth as you can. Your birth card, your spirit card, your handler card, your ego card, your karma cards, your tarot cards, your solar uh, placement, your rising sun. You need to know all, as many of these as you can. I know it can seem overwhelming. That's why I did How to Decode Yourself. It's an hour long video. We're almost at 100,000 people, which is not even a lot. But if you've been one of those that have supported it, thank you so very much. It was just all for you anyway. I don't even, like I said, I don't monetize it. Like I get, no, I'm just, this is my gift. Like this is what I, I'm doing, what, I'm, what I love doing. You know what makes me feel good? Helping people. That's what, that's what I get off on. I get off, it's my reward. Hearing somebody have a testimonial saying, you know what, that changed my life. That's the payoff that I like. I've become a minimalist in my life. I don't really have anything. I don't own a car. I ride it around in a, uh, hit in a, a, a secondhand bike. Love the thing. My life has become an asset. It's more, uh, how about your life? Like if you look at your life, is it, a, is, it, is it more of an asset based or is it a liability? Most people I see, they live in a, li uh, a, a layer of liability. Their life is a liability. That's totally fine. I'm not going to tell people how to live their lives, but for me, Becoming a minimalist has been the greatest experience of my life. Will I stay this way forever? I don't know. I'm riding the wave as long as it wants to take me. Being a minimalist has allowed me to put time into this research. You, you, if you guys and gals only knew how many hours my ass sits in this chair and stares at this computer screen, sucking in radiation to deliver to all of you these, you know, these uh, presentations, a lot goes, that's all I do. 
I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying it's like that's my dedication to the world. I'm doing the work because it's, I'm supposed to. I'm being utilized to deliver this to the world because we're having a new age move in upon us. And we're having DNA activation. You, it, the energy coming in, the energy, if you could say like Uranus running the age of Aquarius, it's an electrical sign. You can't just dump the energy and the activation upgrades just right away. The planet's not ready for it yet. You have to slowly trickle them in. Otherwise, you'll fry this place. So if you're here, if you're watching Jordan or Jason or Santos or whoever it is that you're watching, you're cherry picking information. That's what you should be doing. You have several sources. You don't just have one source. You should have several. Not every, I don't have it all figured out for you. And I can honestly and authentically say right to all of your faces right now, I don't have it all figured out. And if I were to lay out all my truths on the table, I know that I have what people would call errors in there. I already know it. Not everybody has it all figured out. Not any, you know, like I'm not a fan of like trying to bash people and say they're wrong and they don't know what they're talking about. And I, yeah, I, I joke around and I have fun for sure. Because I just see people just doing the blame game and I just, I'm not a fan of that. But you're not going to see me bashing people. They're just doing them. They're doing their job. I don't care. I, they, don't, they don't have dinner with me. I don't get nothing from bashing people. I, sure, I, don't, I, I stand on my truths. I, I don't agree with a lot of the material that puts out onto the world stage, but that's just probably how you roll too. You got to make the truth your own. And just remember, ladies and gentlemen, the only reason why this reality exists is because you're plugged into it. That's it. It's as simple as that. And you're going to have influences in your life and you're going to influence people. Great. You're constantly marketing yourself. That's what we do. Hey, look at me. You, you'll see it now. Like you just, I mean, go on to Instagram and you just see a wall of marketing. Oh, like it's an endless supply of look at me, look at me, look at this, buy this, I have this, do this, I have this. It's just, it's endless. It's endless. That's our war reality that we live in. Is It's just a world of marketing. <clears throat> That's all it is. And marketing and numerology is 31, just like Jerry Cantrell's birth card. See, you're being marketed death. This game, you're going to face death. How fast you get there, that's the big question. That's the big question. Debbie Horn's asking, what is a gatekeeper? Uh, in reference to what? You'd have to correlate it to something. I, I'm not sure. That could go so many different ways. Gatekeeper, what are you talking? Callie Dawn's asking about Grigori Grabofi's number codes. I don't know who that is. Soul code. I don't. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank sending all of you all listen, the support and the amount of love here is very, very much appreciated. Um, you could have like I've said this so many times, right? You could have been anywhere tonight. You came here. Thank you so very much. Thanks for supporting this research. Thanks for supporting Jordan and Jason and Santos. And you know, you don't agree with everything that they say. Who cares? Just cherry pick what you like out of it. 
That's it. It's all you got to do. Oh, I like a little bit of this. I'll take a little bit of that. Take a little bit of this. And then you make up you. It's you. You don't want to be a mirror of me. You don't want to be just like Jordan. You want to be a, a, a lot like Jordan though, right? Like if you like a lot of his information, you want to be a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And I'll take a little bit of Santos and a little bit of Brashears and a little bit of this and a little. That's what you want to do. And then you become you. And that's what makes you so special because you're not like them. It's you. And then you get to stand up on the pedestal and, you need, and then you get to become you. And it's pretty amazing. Scripted or not. Do I believe in reincarnation? Jesse's asking that. I did a decode on reincarnation. N not just reincarnation decoded, but I've done, you know, the greatest show on earth decoded. I've decoded, I can read your mind. And these decodes, along with decoding people, places, and things, showing predestination and scripted reality is, is solidified. It's, they're, they're, I, don't, I don't know how you would even argue against it. So these are cemented, that we live in a predestined scripted reality. The question is, do we come back here? Do we get a choice? So to be honest with you, I don't care. If we, if we do, we do. If we don't, we don't. We don't if, do we have control over that? I guess we'll find out. You get these theories of like, don't go to the light. Go to, how do you know that? So just, let's just use some logic and critical thinking. How would somebody know to tell you, don't go to the light? See, the only way that would be a one plus one equals two fact is if they actually experienced it, which the answer one plus one equals two is nobody ever has. Dreams don't count. Out-of-body experiences don't count. Near-death experiences, they do not count. That's like taking mushrooms or chewing on... Uh, on, on DMT or whatever and saying, oh, that's so real. You had an experience in your mind. I'm not here to take away whether you think it's real or not, but see, what I, what I will say very confidently is the person that tells you don't go to the light, they can't prove that. They've never done it. To go there and then come back and say, oh yeah, well, I did it. So I'm telling you, you'd better not go to the light. It's a theory, folks. It's a theory. That's all it is. It's an idea that can't be proven. It can't be supported at all other than an opinion that it has no backbone to it. It's like me telling you, I had this dream last night that you're going to die tomorrow. It was so real. And then tomorrow comes and then the next day comes and you're calling me on the phone like, well, I guess that didn't happen. Well, I, could, I just could have sworn I saw it in my dream. So I'm not like, I'm not here to take away the ideas that people have of like, don't go to the light or no. these are, but they're just ideas. Just like I'm from the Pleiades or I'm from, oh, how are you to prove that? How are you to prove that you're from the Orion group? Or how do you prove you're from the Draco group? Or how do you prove you're from Sirius? I'm not saying you, you're not, but you can't prove it. Like I can prove right now that I'm here doing this podcast. There's nobody that can say, no, you're not here. I am here right now, staring in front of the camera, talking into this microphone. But when I tell you, oh, don't go to the light, it's a trap. Okay. Have you done it before? Well, the answer is no. Well, then how do you know? How, what makes you the authority? <laughs> Where's the critical thinking these days? That's, that's just really what I'm trying to get at. Where's the critical thinking in the consciousness of mankind today, in today's day and age? Where's the critical thinking? I just don't know. I just think people say, oh, that sounds good. Yeah, I don't go through the light. Oh, I'm not going to do that. Darn it. So they just regurgitate it. And guess what? We all do it. We all are guilty of regurgitating information. All of us. It's just what level are you at? And then are you consciously aware you're doing it and then you'd be like, I'm not going to do that anymore. 
And then that's a level activation upgrade. I mean, there's been a lot of shows, and, and again, there's an opinion that somebody downloaded in their mind, and they wrote it in a dialogue or a screenplay, and they say, hey, you want to make a movie or a show out of this? Yeah, let's do it. A big one was like, you know, you've probably seen the show Dark. It was a German, I think German-based on Netflix. Amazing show. That show was talking about, you just change characters. Then you have Hotel California, the Eagles, which I did a decode on. Hotel Capricorn was another one on reincarnation, supporting that you don't get out of this game. The song, there was a song by Unicorn, and it says, once you're in here, you're in for life. You don't get out. Well, that would piss a lot of people off. You see, I think that if that was a one plus one equals two fact that you're never going to get out of this game, there would already be a revolution. There would already be people freaking saying, screw you to the governments and states and all these, all these organizations. That, like, why, why are you even here? Waste of my time. I don't need you. But you see, the, the idea is not one plus one equals two facts. So people are like, oh yeah, well, we need these organizations and you're here. But we don't, no. But maybe, just maybe, the idea of like, oh, there's some afterlife. So people just, oh, let's just put our faith in. Then you have the government with the Bible and the or Romans 13 verses 1. Don't, you know, don't go against the authorities because they were placed there by God. They'll just justify it with that. Speaking of that, let's go to a sneak peek. Uh, let's show you. Let me show you a couple here. Time for a sneak peek. Here we go. Start with this one right here. I got this coming out. I got like maybe, how many slides do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I don't know, like 12 slides. I had this one shelf for a long time. Remember this show? This is a, one of the best shows ever, I think. It's called The Good Place. And the main person, cast it to play the creator of earth which this was archangel michael this is jesus now they casted ted danson edward bridge danson the third and uh, there's his birth card born in 1947 47 is scripted reality 19 is son remember the dead sea scrolls were found in 1946 and 1947 part of the scripted reality He's got the two of hearts. The two of hearts, there's the picture, there's the, oop, there's the confirmation, right? So you think about it, think about it now. There, the good place, which if you watch this show, you, she, she comes up and she's like, is this the afterlife? Is this heaven? And Ted Danson tries to make, make her to believe, oh yeah, you're, you're in heaven, but it's not. And then they pair you with somebody and it's a nightmare and like you think that everything's great, but it's really not. Kind of describing Earth, right? That's the joke. And he's trying to, Michael, Archangel Michael's trying to make, like Earth is his pr project. It's like, a, it's like a, 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 an experiment. Well, he's got the Two of Cups card. This is the card of contracts and agreements. This is tied to everybody. You have a contract with God to be here. This is how tightly woven this damn script is right here. Just in this show alone. I have so many more pieces to this one right here. If you've ever seen the show, it's just a really funny show. And at the end, in season four, these characters have the ability to actually opt out and not continue in the afterlife. Really interesting twist at the end of the show. And then I got this one coming out. I've already done this once. But with a fresh set of eyes, I decided to do it again. 
And this, just doing this again, ladies and gentlemen, assured me that we live in a scripted reality because this guy right here, his life was not his own. Okay? He was being used. Here's a slide just to prove it. To, I'm not going to say proof, support it. I don't like using that word proof. He was born on July 10th. July 10th card is the Ace of Diamonds. It's the 27th card in the deck. And what was he known for? Currency. Alternating currency. He went head to head with Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison developed direct currency. And then Tesla invented the alternating currency, alternating current, which was cheaper, better, more efficient. Well, guess what Thomas Edison's birth card is? The freaking ace of spades. <laughs> card 40. 40 and 27, 67. 67 is the 19th prime number. 67 is the most magnetic element. Magnetic is electric current, folks. This guy had no choice in his life. So I got this coming out. Where his, his birth home is in Croatia, his name numerology, folks, he was being used as an instrument to deliver the inventions that he put out on the world stage. These characters, we as characters, we become instruments to create this reality. It is already written. That's why you're seeing these outcomes like this. These are no brainers. The odds of this being this way. He died on, a day, on January 7th, which is the seven of spades, which is card 46, which is tied to Ra. Tied to DNA. I'm, I'm going to do this one a little bit. I got one on Pfizer and uh, what's coming on December 2023. Stick around. I'll, I'll, I'll be doing that in a little bit. A little sneak peek on some astrology and December of 2023. What the energy is going to look like coming into this reality. And for you to be somebody to observe and be less non-reactive. Because that's the name of the game to level up, to be non-reactive. Most people react through their habitual programming. We're all guilty of it. This is why become a, becoming a minimalist has been such a blessing in my life because when you're a minimalist, you have your, you're, have like, you're like this wide open field and you don't have as many liabilities in your life. So life is, doesn't suck you dry. And you get to pay attention of, hey, what am I doing right now? What am I thinking? Well, how am I, how am I functioning? Something comes your way. Are you reacting to it? Because I got to get to work. And like you just react because you got to get to work. And you're not thinking about reacting because you got to get to work and you got to get the project down. Or you got to get the kids to school. Or you got to feed the dog. Or you spill dog food all over the damn floor. And you're like, oh my God. And you're just being reacting. You're reacting to situations in your life versus if you didn't have all these liabilities in your life and you step back, you'd be like, I'm just going to observe. I'm going to observe more. Now I get it. A lot of you have very busy lives. I... I I, I take that into consideration. So that you would say, well, how, how would you do the best you can? Just because you get a busy life doesn't mean you can't be an observer and be less of a reactor kind of person. See, human beings are, are really programmed to react, react. It's to do the act again. Re means to do it again. React. It's a verb. Reaction is a noun. To do. You create the action again. Re action you do it again religion you do it again you think religion's new no it's just it's just repackaged differently that's all it is it's a big club and it has many facets to it so if you don't like that one oh i don't like that story oh well here's another one oh that one sounds pretty good it just, zzz, just catches you. Catches you. So 
someone's at uh, Maurice is asking if someone had a rough life should they bother trying to change or just allow the abuse life code to go on change it if you look I don't know what's going on in your life but if you're being abused and you can change that well then why would you stay in the abusive state I know you're gonna you may say well it's, it's not that easy it, okay if that's how you're going to react to it. Folks, when you have peace in your life, when you don't have abuse in your life, you now have your, you now have a very even playing field. But when you're not, when you're being abused physically, mentally, you don't, there's, it's not an even playing field. You're constantly in fight or flight. Make the change. Make the decision that you want to make the change. It's that easy. But then, you know, I know you. I know you're going to make justifications, and some of you are going to make excuses. Well, it's not that easy. You don't understand my situation. I don't. But the decision is easy. The decision is the easiest thing you could do. I'm not going to do it anymore. If you're around toxicity and you're allowing to be around toxicity, why would you continue around to be toxic? It's your decision. You'll be like, well, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have a job and I'm, they're paying for, then go get a job. Oh, well, I, I, well, I, I can't do that because there, there's the reaction. See, if you just step back and you look at your life, stop saying you can't, start saying you can and go out there and do it. It starts with the decision. Really, that's it. It just starts with the decision. So, if you like being abused, and you justify the being abused because you're being supported, you don't have a job. I'm a mother, or I, my husband pays for everything, and you, you don't. You, you're just. To me, they're just excuses. You're going to be committed to your commitments than your excuses. That's just the way I look at it. You've got to focus more on your commitments than you do your excuses. Which one do you want more? That's the way I would look at that. And I, I'm, I'm making it very simple because you've got to make it simple. You can't make it so extravagant and so dynamic. You've got to simplify it. Look at the toxicity in your life. What's the root of the toxicity? Make the decision you're going to move away from it. Keep it simple. If you get into the layers, well, what about this? And I don't know how I'm going to do this. You've already lost you're never going to make the change because you're automatically tacking on the reasons why you can't do it. Abusive parents. Okay. I mean, are you living with your parents now? I would think not. So you got to, I mean, I'm not going to tell you if you should forgive them or not. See, if you look at some, I'm not justifying people that are abusive. If you've had abusive parents, I'm not going to justify that. Their behavior, right? But you see, if you're feeling guilty or if you're angry or you're having resentment towards their abusive nature towards you, well, that's on you. See, if they're not abusing you anymore, then you're not being affected by any abuse anymore. If you're still holding on to the past abuse, that's on you. You're deciding to continue to carry that torch. You got to let that shit go. It's that simple. You got to let it go. If you don't want to forgive them, that's totally fine. You know, then, you know, there's always a story. Like, there's always going to be a story. The abuse probably got handed down from somebody else, their parents, their grandparents. Not to justify the abuse. I'm just saying is like they were, they, the, the baton got passed down, the baton got passed down. But if you're, if you have the mindset of being like, well, I'm not going to hold on to this anymore and I'm just going to let it go. Congratulations. You've cut and severed the cord. But if you continually as an adult hold that abuse and you hold it as a victim and it's like, I was the victim and it would, they, they treated me this way. That's totally fine. But you got to cut the cord. You got, you got to be the one to make the change and, and, cut, and cut that cord to not pass the baton on anymore. And you got to make lemonade out of that. So if you're a parent, you'd be like, I would never do that to my kids. Well, you see, if you never got abused, you never would have known not to do that to your kids. So maybe the reason why you did get abused is so you wouldn't abuse your kids. And that's what stops the chain from moving forward. If that makes any sense. That's just how I see it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
See, ladies and gentlemen, if you start, if you, if you start looking at your life like an opportunity, if you really wake up tomorrow and say, okay, life is my opportunity. And then you realize that the opportunity in front of you is being held back by the things you're holding on to. So it's like, okay, I have this opportunity in front of me, but I can't move to that opportunity because there's all these things in my past that are holding me back. It's like, you're, you got like these, these lines stuck to you. And these are all your ideas of what happened to you in the past that, and they don't belong in your future day. You're looking at your opportunities and be like, you can't take that with you. You know, a lot of you, I've said this before, a lot of you that have been in relationships that were shitty, you, you never healed from those relationships. You never gave yourself the permission to heal from those relationships. And then you go out and you seek another partner because you desperately feel like you need to be in a partnership. And then what you end up doing is you end up showing up in that new partnership with all this baggage and damage. And I know you don't mean to, but you end up showing up at the doorstep of this part, like you're ready to move in with your new boyfriend or girlfriend. And what you're really doing is you're showing up with all your exes that you haven't healed from. And you're literally showing up with all your bags and you're like, well, they, they're coming in too. They got to live here too. Because you haven't severed the ties of how you feel about those people. You haven't forgiven them. So you show up at your new partner's house with your bags and you got all your exes with you. That's really how it works. <laughs> the joke. Imagine that. You show up with all your exes and you're like, well, they have to sleep on the couch. They're coming with me. That's the deal. It's a deal breaker. That's the joke. So if you're not willing to let go of your past, the crummy past that you don't like, if you're not willing to just let it all that go, you're going to carry that into the next opportunity in your life. And that opportunity will be affected by your past. And there will be remnants of that opportunity in your future days of your past days. And you wonder why the patterns continually repeat in your life. Because you haven't done the work of releasing and getting, it's as simple as saying, I'm not taking that with me anymore. It's that simple. So last thing I'll say on this, Maurice Hernandez, if they still abuse, well, then cut it out. It's that simple. I, I know some of you are like really family oriented. I know that may be a challenge for you to do, to sever that tie and move on. But what's, what is more important for you? To have the family connection and, but we'll cut the, there's a caveat that comes with, it's like, oh, if you wanna have a family relationship with me, you gotta deal with my abuse. That's the requisite. If, if you wanna be part of the family, you gotta take the abuse from us. That's literally what they're doing. They're telling you that because you know that's the case. If they're still abusing you, then they're literally telling you. They're not telling you directly, but they're telling you, if you want to be a part of this family, you got to take the abuse that comes with it. They're not saying that directly, but that's what they're saying because you just said they're still abusing. So you, for you to say, okay, if you don't even say anything, your silence, as they say, you don't say anything, that's your consent. You're saying, no problem. I, I, you, I want the abuse because I want the family. And if it comes as a package, you got to take both at the same time. If you're not willing to take the abuse, but you want the family, but you can't get the family without the abuse, well, there's your answer to say, I'm not doing this anymore. And you say, sayonara, I'm out of here. Bye-bye. And I'm going to tell you right now, man, from what I've learned through personal development, big shout out to Bob Proctor and all his stuff. He's got, I'm going to tell you right now what he says. They're not going to want you to leave. When you say, see you later, I'm out of here, I'm not doing this anymore, they're going to, trust me, they're going to slowly try to creep into your life. They're going to call you on the phone and they're going to try to sweeten the deal. Oh, I promise I won't do it again. I'll make an extra effort not to do it again. They'll try to sweeten the pot. People don't change unless they want to change. You can't make them change as they say the tiger, you have to, the tiger has to change their own stripes. Don't let them try to sweeten the deal with you and try to get you sucked back in. At this stage of the game, if you want to have your DNA activation upgrades, ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be ties that will probably have to be severed. You're going to have to let friends go. And they're not going to want you to leave. Why? Because then there's a void in their life. 
And that's just a selfish void because it's like they want to use you to abuse so they can use you as the abuse. That's what they partly use you for. And that's the funny thing about relationships, ladies and gentlemen. And I've talked about this with Jordan when we've done our live podcast. And I say this just with fun because we all do it. We all use each other. I really start to think about this. We all use one another. You, I mean, you can't have sex by yourself. Yeah, you masturbation, but in order to have sexual intercourse, you need somebody to do that with. That means you use your partner so you can get off. You use your partner to feel good when you hold their hand or when you get a hug or when you get to make out with them. You get a payoff every time you kiss your partner. Oh my God, it's so sensual. Oh my God, they're the best kisser in the world. You get That's the payoff you get. That's the reward you get. You use them to get the payoff of putting your lips on theirs and it feels great. And they're amazing and they're sensual and they're the best kisser in the world. And they're the best this and they're the... You use them to get that feeling. That's what we do as human beings. We use each other. Why do you hang out with your friends? I'm going to go hang out with my friend tonight. Well, have you asked yourself why? Why are you going to hang out with your friend? I like hanging out with them. What's the reason? Because they're funny. They're a stand-up comedian. Oh, I see. So you go and use them so you can laugh. Yeah, that's about right. See, are we doing this authentically as human beings? That's what we do as friends. If you have friends, you use those friends to get some kind of payoff. We all do it. Some of you are not going to want to admit that. Totally fine. I'm proposing an idea for you to take into consideration. If you fall in love with somebody, you use them for love. And vice versa. They make me feel, oh, you don't understand. They make me feel so good. First and foremost, nobody makes you feel anyway. You got to do it to yourself. Nobody can make you feel so good. You feel so good because that's the payoff you get from the person that you use. I know that's not going to be a fan favor here, this topic. Some of you are going to be like, Logan, that, that, what an insensitive asshole. Think about what I'm telling you, though. You hang out with your friends because you get a payoff from your friends. Oh, I know, but they, 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 they're really smart. I get to hang out with my doctor friend. I get to pick his brain. He's so smart. You use him. The payoff you get is you get to get his intelligence. You know how many guys, I'm just going to be straight up candy. Do you know how many guys, do you know how many guys that have money that could never get a hot chick and they get them because they're, they got money and they get to go hang out with the hot chick. Hot chick would never hang out with that dude, but he's got money. That's how some people hang out. That's how some people roll. That's just the way it is. And it goes both ways. So the girl maybe uses the dude, so she gets a nice dinner, gets a date, gets to be rolled out, and gets to be wined and dined, and then he would never be able to hang out with a hot chick, but he's got the cash, he rinds and dines, he gets the payoff of the girl, she gets the payoff of being wined and dined. Happens all the time, ladies and gentlemen. We need to be honest and authentic about this. That's our reality. That is just one layer of it. People use each other. They're not willing to discuss these kinds of things. So you get the basic fundamentals of being friends with somebody. Your best friend. They've been my best friend for so long. Great. Why are they your best friend? What's the reason why they're your best friend? You get some kind of payoff because of that. Oh, they make me feel so special. They protect me. That's your payoff. They protect you. There's always a payoff in life. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. If you play the victim mentality, you get the payoff of people hearing people say, oh, you poor thing. Or you get, the, you get somebody patting you on that. It's okay, I'll help you out. You get the reassurance that you're the victim. And the payoff you get is from other people recognizing that you're a victim. And you use that as energy. That's your payoff. That's what we do as society, folks. I got ringing in my ear right now. I know this is not a fun topic. I know a lot of people are, this is not going to be fan favorite. I'm probably going to get some thumbs down. That's totally fine. I'm having adult conversations here. That's just how it is, folks, in this reality. We use each other. That's what we do. 
Sometimes it's money. Like I, I'm going to go to the club tonight. I'm going to go listen to this DJ. You got to pay twenty dollars to get in. You got to pay two hundred, five hundred dollars for a, a table with a bottle service. Right? You use the club. The club uses you. They get paid. You get to see the entertainment. It's just a different exchange of energy. It's just, it's, that's why I'm saying it. it's just when you can take a real deep topic like that, that's not a crowd favor to talk about authentically. We just make a joke out of it. People, we, we, that's what we do in life. We use each other. That's just the way it is. It's, ex, it's, an, it's just another way of saying we exchange energy. I use my wife for tacos. <laughs> That's a, that would be a great shirt. <laughs> oh, shit. That's funny. Yeah, I mean, that per perfect example, friends with benefits. Perfect example of somebody using somebody and, inv and vice versa. We're friends, but we have benefits. So you use each other for sex. That's part of your friendship or part of your relationship, whatever. I mean, folks, I know you have friends. Like I have friends that I, like, like Jordan, for example, since everybody knows Jordan, I genuinely care about that guy as a friend. Like he's just a really good dude. He's just, he's just a really good person. So when I got to hang out with him, like, what did I, what did I, what was I using Jordan for? His friendship. I got to experience somebody who's really being authentic and, and living a life of ethics and morals in a high degree. I get to observe that. Now, I don't have to pay him for that. Like I would to go and see a DJ to see the DJ spin those records and oh my God, this DJ is amazing. I got to see Jordan spin his life live right in front of me because we're friends. I don't have to pay him for that, but you know what I have to pay him with? My time and vice versa. But it's an authentic friendship that we have, but they're still using or like the time that goes into that and the payoff that we get, there's always going to be a payoff folks. In all your friendships, there will be a payoff. You'll start to pay attention and you'll start to look at some of your friends. You're going to start to see they use you. Some people actually manipulate you. They know they're using you. Start to pay attention to the people you hang out with and you start to pay attention to what you consciously do. You're going to start to see that you are somebody who uses other people and they use you. And there's payoffs with that. You make a decision and there's going to be a payoff with that. Sometimes it ain't the payoff you want. Like, oh, damn, I should have never did that deal. Well, you got a payoff, but it wasn't a payoff that you wanted. But sometimes that payoff is something you needed to propel you into the next layer or chapter of your life. <clears throat> But that's the big joke in my, it's everybody uses everybody. That's what we do. All right, I think I've, I've kind of hammered uh, that topic. So let's, let's kind of get away from this. I mean, how many friends do you have? 
Last thing I'll say, I mean, some of you, you have friends that you just call on the phone because you, like, you, you, this, is, this is what you'll say about this friend. Oh, but you know what? I trust them. Like I can tell them anything and I know they won't go tell anybody. And they're such a good listener. I can just talk for a half hour. They won't even interrupt me. They'll just listen. They're so good at listening. I can vent to them and they're, they just let me vent and they're such a good friend. That's what you'll say. But what you really should be saying is you use them to get shit off your chest. You use them because they listen to your stories without interrupting you. That's really what goes on. But you'll say it in a way where it sounds really great. They're such a good friend because they, they're such a good listener. I can tell them anything. They hold the secrets. They don't tell anybody anything. So I can tell them anything I want. That's the payoff for you and them. <laughs> it's just, that's why I'm saying, if you can just take what I'm saying here and just look at life's a damn joke. What we do as human beings, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> it is so ridiculous at what we do as human beings. God, it's so funny. Ugh. <laughs> oh. Man. I enjoy the smell of certain women's hair when they walk by. I'm just telling you, maybe you'll have a different perspective the next time you call up your friend and you, you, you get to talk to them and you observe how they use you and you use them. Oh my God, girl, you should hear what my husband did. Oh, geez, you wouldn't believe what he did. And you, you got to sit and, and sometimes you're like, oh, cripes. Oh, geez, I got to listen to this shit now for the next half hour. And you'll do it. You'll sit there and listen to your friend go off about what their husband is crazy and this and that. And you'll sit there and just suck it up. And, and then your friend is like, thinks you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. You're like, oh my God, she's such an amazing friend. She doesn't say anything. She sits there and listens to me. I can tell her everything about my personal life. But in your mind, you're like, oh God, another damn story. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's the joke. Some of you won't even speak up and say anything because you don't want to hurt the feelings of your friend. So you'd rather just sit there and take it. And a lot of you, you know what you're doing? You're on the phone with them and you're looking at the computer like, uh-huh, yep. Oh my God, really? And you're just not even paying attention to the conversation because you're too afraid to say, listen, girl, I don't want to hear your bullshit tonight, man. You're always doing this to me. This is why like, are we really authentic human beings? Really? Are we acting and behaving authentically? Because they, acting and behaving authentically, we'd be saying, you know what? I don't want to listen to your freaking horror stories at home anymore. That's all you constantly, you, you call me up and you use me so you can tell me your damn gossip stories. But you see, you promulgate it you, you, because you're sitting there listening to it. You don't say nothing. So you're like their favorite friend shrink that doesn't get paid for a consultation. You, get, you give it for free. And you're not even listening half the time anyway. You're on your computer scrolling while they're talking. You got them on speakerphone and you're doing something else. So you're not even there. They think you're there and you're not. <laughs> it's just a ridiculous joke life we have. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. And they don't even realize they're doing it. That's how life sucks you in. People will call you on the phone to use you to talk to you about their gossip at their home because they hate their life and they need someone to talk to. So they use you so they can dump all their, all their energy out on you. It's just so funny, man. I'm telling you. 
Oh my God. I don't know how we got onto this topic, but what a fun night. <laughs> oh. So M Tucker says I have put my best friend in fr I have put my best friend in friendship time out for, for gossiping about others. Yeah, and then you know like you'll get crucified for that. You get to be made out as the victim because now they're not getting their payoff. When you'll start to see folks, if you put your foot down in life, if you start to say no, I'm not going I'm going to take control of my I'm the I'm the star of the damn movie, man. I ain't an extra. If you start to be the star and you start to put your foot down, you start saying more no. You're going to start to piss some people off because they're not getting their payoffs anymore. You're, you're going to really start to weed out the true genuine people that get life. Like having this conversation about using each other is a, you can't have it with most people. It's like, what? You, what do you, I don't use you. What are you talking about? That's why I'm saying you're in a damn soap opera. You're in a damn movie. Well, your, your, your rea my, everybody's reality is a reality show. You're being watched. You're in a, so why do you, ladies and gentlemen, the, out of the top 10 longest running television shows on television right now, uh, the, out of to the top 10, five of them are soap operas. General Hospital, Guiding Light, Days of Our Lives. Why are these the longest running? Soap boppers, because it's drama. Drama feeds the machine. This reality is a machine. And it harvests energy because we live inside of a battery. This reality is a battery. And you're a little cell in the battery. That's why you got trillions of cells in your body. Those give off ATP, energy. That's what keeps the Krebs cycle going and that's what makes you go every day. Cells. Well, we become a cell, trapped in the cell. That's why you have a cell phone. You're in a damn battery, folks. It's a, and it's a movie. It's a video game. It's a reality TV show. It's a damn soap opera. That's the joke of this reality. <laughs> Man. It's just what when you when you see that reality when you see that this reality is a joke, when you see it's a reality show, when you know you're being watched. It's been told to you a million times. I am in the eye in the sky looking at you. I can read your mind. Somebody's watching me. Over and over. Being, we're being told this. So I, then, hey, the next time you're in the shower, you're doing the doo -doo -doo -doo, you know, either by yourself or with a few people or what. You ain't alone. You're not alone, folks. You're being what Every move that you're doing, every little thing you think is a secret. No one's going to see. Everything's being recorded. You're being watched every second of your life. There is no hiding. You can pull the shades down. You can turn off the lights. But you are being watched. You're in a reality show. This is, like I said, this is why that out of the top 10, five of them are soap operas. Why? The longest running shows. To tell you. We are in a soap opera. It's drama. If everybody wore the same clothes, the same shoes, had the same haircut, you know, obviously the variance between the men and women, women all had the same hair length, the same hair color. They wore the same dresses, the same shoes, wore the same perfume. Everybody wore the same perfume. Nobody stood out. The smell was the same. Everybody wore the same deodorant. Every male wore the same set of clothes, boots, drove the same car. There was only one brand of car on the road. How would you view life at that point? 
You could only eat one food, only have one song in your phone to listen to when you work out. You can only do one exercise, one piece of cardio. You can only do it for so long. It has to be the same amount of time every day. Everything's done exactly in accordance with everything else. How's that any fun? Where's the resistance? Where's variation? Where's the, where's the variables in life to make it interesting? You need drama to make the reality show interesting. right it would be boring why are there 77 cards in the tarot because it would be boring if there was just one how the hell are you going to do a reading for somebody with just one card everybody gets the temperance card oh yeah oh you got the temperance card and then the next day oh you got the temperance card all right what, what's my card today it's the temperance card well what's my energy right now the temperance what is tomorrow going to look like? Temperance. Well, how do you do that? Life is perfect, man. I did this post on my Facebook, and some people didn't get it. I don't expect everybody to. And I'm, again, it's not me being here. I'm not anywhere. I'm just me posting my expressions of my viewpoints on the world. And I had this, I postulated this, and, I, and I t I, I'm going to say this, like I, I watched Tron Legacy again, the movie with Jeff Bridges, the remake of Tron 1982, Tron Legacy. And in that movie, there was a big, massive bomb for me that went off like a grenade in my life. And I want to share it with all of you. So at the end of the movie in Tron Legacy, now let me back up a little bit. I'm going to not spoil, but I'm going to give you the plot of the movie. The plot of the movie is this guy, Kevin Flynn, creates a digital universe, and then he goes down into the digital universe and starts to play a character out inside the quantum realm, so to speak. And then when he gets down in the digital world, he wants to create a perfect reality. So he makes an, identi he makes an identical uh, being, and he calls him Clue. So he makes a mirror of himself because he needs a helper to create this perfect world. And as time goes on, everything was grandiose. He starts to create this perfect world. And then this mirror identity, mirror identity of him turns on him, goes against him. And now they become arch enemies. So he goes into hiding. And he's trapped in this world. He can't leave. Kind of like what we're in. And then one day his son comes down in the portal to get down into the game and he finds his father who he hasn't seen in 20 years, plus years. And he, he catches up with him and all that stuff. And fast forward all the way to the end, the climax of the end. He's on this bridge with his arch enemy, Clue. And he knows he's going to die. It's the end of him. Jeff Bridges does. And he gets to explain to Clue, the, 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 the mirror image of him, his helper. He explains to him that he, he tells Clue, he's like, I started out and I wanted to create a perfect world. And what I didn't know then and what I know now is that this world is already perfect. And it was a big monumental nugget for me. And it inspired me to do this post on my Facebook and I had posted it and I said, I said the world's already perfect. And it is. We, we look at the world and we see the ugliness and we say that can't be perfect. But if it wasn't, it wouldn't exist. We may not like it, but whatever created this reality, man, obviously you, you, you look at the body and you look at your immune system and the question is, ladies and gentlemen, you have an immune system. You have your white blood cells. 
the macrocytes, you know, your immune system. Well, the immune system has a job to do. And its job is to attack the foreign invaders that come in your body, bacteria, viruses, pathogens. And it attacks them to get rid of them. Well, the question is, what created the pathogens and the bacteria and the virus? What created those? Well, the logical answer is, is whatever created the immune system. Because you, you could say, well, the devil created the pathogens and bacteria. What? No, we have predator prey in this reality. What creates the grizzly bear? What creates the salmon? The salmon gets eaten by the grizzly bear. Do you think the devil creates the grizzly bear and God creates the salmon? God, whatever created this reality, you can call it God, whatever, it creates the immune system and the immune system doesn't have a job unless there's foreign invaders coming in to give the job to the immune system that then attack it. That is a perfect system. It may not work perfect in how we present it as perfect or describe it as, but it's perfect. In the context of where we're at in this reality, we move towards the cycle of the golden age and our bodies improve and our immune systems improve and food improves and air quality improves. That's the perfect system moving back towards source energy. It goes in cycles. It's perfect exactly the way it is. It doesn't need changing. Yes, it will change. Yes, we will have a hand in changing it, but that's because it's supposed to change part of that perfect cycle. The whole thing is perfect. Life's perfect, folks. So if you don't think it's perfect, stop looking at the imperfections. Stop blaming the imperfections. Stop blaming your friend because they're not where your thinking is. Your intellect is up here and they're down here and you'd be like, oh, you're an idiot. You're a sheep. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Well, dude, you were once there two years ago. Oh, now you're such a big shot because now, oh, you got to figure it all out. And now you're sitting here judging and blaming and you realize, you know, like they're part of the creation too. You're judging yourself. It's all gradients here. There's only one person to save in this reality and that is you. That's it. And if you have kids, obviously those kids, if you raise them, you got to, you're part of that saving them, them kids and being the example. But you're not here to save your wife. Your wife's not here to save your husband. You set the example and you, obviously if, when you fall in love, you hope that they are on the same pattern as you. But they may not be. Life is perfect, ladies and gentlemen. We just look at the imperfections and we judge it. And we say it's not perfect. It is. It's perfect. And that wherever we're at right now, it is perfect. I go outside here. I live in paradise, right? It's not perfect. I live in a third. Mexico is a third world country. The sanitation, like compared to the U.S., the sanitation's. I could easily look at that and be like, man, that I go outside. I see palm trees, the beach, the water. It's beautiful. It's perfect. But it's not perfect. But then you start to blame, you start to break it down. So let's get into some of your comments. I am Kyra. I want to complain to whoever created the fleas and ticks. Yeah, exactly. Did the devil create fleas and ticks? Mosquitoes? Is that the devil's job? Come on. Where's the logic and critical thinking? It's in, we live in an ecosystem. You know, I had po like, you know, Santos, I know Santos, he can't stand mosquitoes. He, and he cracks me up when we talk about him because he gets so serious and his comedy comes out. But mosquitoes are food for birds. They're, they're part of the food chain. So yeah, we don't like that they stick us and carry malaria and diseases. And I don't like, I don't like them either. But, but birds love them because it's a part of their food supply. <clears throat> I 
So a lot of comments coming in. Thanks everybody for commenting on that long ass rant. And it, you know, I just, to summarize this, ladies and gentlemen, you know, like when I say, cause I know some of you saying, oh, like there's no way it's, there's no way it's so, it's so corrupt and, but it's perfectly corrupt. It's not going to last forever, you know. It's, you're going to get to a stage where the corruption is going to get removed to a certain degree and then people are going to cheer and then they're going to get bored with that because there's going to be no drama and then they're going to look for you like, oh my God. And they're going to look for, they're, honestly, they're going to expect change to happen. They're going to conform. Conformity is the biggest killer on the world stage. We conform. We conform. That's what we do. And then sometimes we don't want to change at all because we're too afraid because we're stuck in conformity. So I'm going through your comments. All right, let's get it to a different topic here. Does anybody have any questions? Someone's asking me to do a decode on Sikhism. You know, to, to really kind of give you the general average of, of those topics. Um, and I'm, I'm reluctant to put Sikhism as a religion. Um, I really would just like to say that Sikhism is an archetype. I look at things a little bit differently than, than most people. I, I, even though we say, oh, Christianity is a religion, Sikhism is a religion, it's an, to me it's an archetype. And I realized this like many years ago, I was living in um, Fort Worth, Texas for a short period of my life. And uh, when I was there, um, I got to go to this mega church. And I've talked about this before. Um, and it was amazing. It was a Christian-based church. The pastor was like born. I would wish I could look up his astrological chart because I know what I would find. But the guy was like amazing. Loved what he did. Born to do it. Natural. And when I was there, I got to go a few times. I mean, it was like professional band, stage presence, light, sound. It was, it was unbelievable. It was like a show. I mean, this, this place had it going on. And besides the whole, you know, a place of worship, it was an energy center. And I realized when I was there that this thing's an archetype. Like it's alive and it's, it's a harvester of energy. And I'm not being negative, positive. I'm just being like neutral. I'm just labeling this as it's an energy harvester. Just like when you go inside of a sports stadium, that's an energy harvesting sports stadium. All the energy there is being harvested. And it ain't being harvested by man. So when you start to look at our reality through archetypes, like a group, you belong to a group, that's an archetype. Everybody that goes to that group becomes part of a group archetype. So I started looking at things, and this is what I do now. I look at 
like clusters of things and they become archetypes. You know, you go, if you work at a car dealership, you sell cars at Mercedes Benz Beverly Hills, that's an archetype. It's a group of people that are joined together to sell Mercedes Benz and cars and they're all part of the team. That team is an art becomes an archetype. It's an energy center. And this is how I look at our reality now. And I have for a very long time. So when you remove what the archetype's designed to do, you realize that it's an archetype and it's designed to harvest energy. That's what its job is. To, to, to give and take energy. Uh, that's, what, that's, what it's, that's what it's designed to do. It's very interesting when you start to look at things in archetypes. We remove all the dogma and all the adjectives and all the things that we label as, you know, forget all that. No, just, it's an archetype. What, what, what archetypes do you put your energy into? You're an archetype. You're constantly marketing yourself. There are tons of people on, on Instagram, you know, like that's, that's all they do. They look at me, look at me, look at me, look at my product. Oh, I'm selling this. Look at this product. Oh, yeah. And they're getting paid to do it, but they're marketing for that company. They become an archetype. They start promoting. And then you start to realize that on an individual basis, you're marketing for the mainstream and you're not even getting paid for it. At least people on Instagram that are, you know, that are brand ambassadors that are marketing products and they're getting paid. Like I, I'm constantly being emailed by companies that are inviting me to promote their product on my YouTube channel. Constantly. Do this commercial, do this. I'm like, no, I'm not interested, not interested, not interested. The weirdest stuff comes out, like, like that has nothing to do with even my brand. But I would get paid for it, right? But then you take that same exact context and you move it into what are you marketing in your life? Well, a lot of people, you start to look at what they're doing. They're marketing politics. You'll go to their page on Facebook or social, and it's, it's all this and that and this about pop. And it's like, are you getting paid for that? No. I mean, I can see if you were a political advisor and you get paid every week to do that, to market. But if you really start to pay attention to people's lives, even yours, what are you marketing for free? You, you'll start to see that you market a lot of things for free. You, you don't even, you get nothing for it. Free advertisement for the mainstream and you're part of it for those archetypes. It's really interesting. Uh, Lee's asking me more. He would like to hear more of your thoughts about the pyramids. Well, the pyramids, theoretically, right? I've, I've postulated this. It seems like that it could be a portal. The shape of the pyramid, why it's created, it's 51 degrees on an angle. The numbers through the, the aspects of, of pi and phi are going to be the numbers one and five that match the 51 degrees uh, uh, of the slope. 51 is antimony, which has got the Egyptian all-seeing eye on it. Why all these correlations to the five and the one? Why is there a king's chamber and a queen's chamber? What, like, what is this whole thing? What is it? So a, a lot of it, Lee, is instinctive. It's a hunch. It's a theory. So I'm not saying it's true. I'm saying it's theoretical. It's a hunch. It's an instinct of mine that I felt for a very long time. That, 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 that's why it's protected. And then now that I've done the breakdown of it, you know, just three, four days ago, which was probably some of the most enlightening layers of decoding I've ever been given, the, 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 the hunch that I have about that thing being some kind of reality simulator or something it, it does something becomes more and more apparent through the theories 
based upon the support of like these, the numbers and where they're located at. It, besides all the great work and all the great research that people have done on that stuff. I mean, I've done it like when I do, when you do it yourself, it's much more gratifying. But when you see the numbers through mathematics and through alchemy, and then you place the tarot cards in there and you place the cards of illumination in there, then you take the astrological map and you place it over the pyramid. And you start to see, because the pyramid is, you know, latitude and longitude. Latitude is the 29 degrees coming down. Longitude is the 31 degrees going across. Longitudinally, it represents Pi and Shiva. Latitudinally, it represents Vishnu and, um, and the north, north to south and light. My current level of understanding with the pyramids, the 29 degrees north latitude, 29.97, the speed of light represents the golden ratio and light coming down to the pyramid. That's why it's a tetrahedron shape. And then once it goes through the pyramid and it hits the ground, now it goes longitudinally and longitudinally is pi, which represents earth, the perfect circle. Now, getting beyond that and the numbers, what I'm going to be showing in this Khufu Decoded, to me, are groundbreaking. Maybe they've already been discovered, but I mean, this is stuff I found on my own that I'm going to share with the world. Maybe somebody can do something with it. I don't know. But they're the most interesting numbers I've ever found in, a, in, in an existent landmass. <clears throat> have I decoded dreaming? Yes, I have life is but a dream. Um, see, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to... Hang on. If you go to my channel right here, see, I, I, I'm not sure why not enough people know this, but I get a lot, I get a lot of people ask me, hey, have you decoded this? Have you decoded that? Look, like, look, I have 457 videos. There's more than this. But like, I have decoded so many topics, I can't even keep track of them. So if you go to my playlist section, Right? It'll have my Prison Planet series. It'll have Decoding Shorts, the shorter videos, my Scripted Reality series, my Architect of the Universe series, God is a Comedian series, all my What's Your Questions, Decoding Music, Political, Random Thoughts is a series, Music, Movies. Okay, I have these all in categories, but if you are searching for a very specific topic, you just come over to this hourglass right here, the magnifying glass, you click on that, and you type in, because what was the question? You were like, uh, uh, what were you asked? Oh, the life is but a dream. So if you just type in dream, there it is. Life is but a dream. So you just, I've already decoded it. Are we living inside of a dream? Part of me says yes. This decode right here supports it. This decode right here supports that we, that we are living inside the dream of the cosmos. That's what this says. But again, I'm not going to make the exact determination for you. You got to make the determination yourself. But that's what you do here. You just type in keywords. I got a, so many people. Like, did you decode the matrix? Yeah, I've uh, tw twice. I have the white rabbit, the matrix four. I have the first one done. And I think I even have behind the scenes. I mean, I did a podcast with uh, Dr. Shelnell Wolverton on the decoding the matrix. This was like two years ago. So with so many decodes I have, folks. I mean, what do you, I have, I have pretty much any topic you can think about, I've covered it in these videos. All you got to do is search for it. Okay. Uh, I am Kairos is asking me about polyhedral dice. I haven't messed around with them. Um, you know, for me, I, I just take, I can take a set of cards. 
I can take a set of these cards right here and I can have a conversation with them. Now, see, the, the, the thing in question here is like coming from a religious background, you know, I was raised JW. And what I was taught was that only God can read your mind. That's what I was taught. That's why you say prayer in private. You don't say it out loud. So that's what I was taught. That's my, that was my foundation. Okay. So I, I used that foundation. And I'm not using it to justify what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm saying, okay, cool. How can I have a conversation? Like I'm, I will sit with a deck of cards when I feel the urge and I'll, I'll start to talk to whatever's in my head. You can call it God, whatever, but I don't say it out loud. I say it in my mind and I'll start flipping the cards and I'll place them on the table and I get my answer. Like, unde like it's absolutely undeniable the answer that I get. So who's giving me the answer? What is giving me the answer? If only thing that can read my mind is God. So how can these be anything other than being from God? So you can't just stick an asterisk next to something and say, well, if you're reading cards or tarot cards, well then, then the, the, the devil can read your mind. That's bullshit. Don't try to justify it, to spin it, to, to make sure you get your outcome. No, straight across the board, man. It's just me and God in my voice, the voice of my head. That's me and God. That's it. I can have a conversation with the cards. It'll tell me, give me all the answers I want. And I get my answers. And then I correlate that to my research and I see my research. And then it becomes like, I go through these decodes and I'm like, oh, I forgot about that one. And I see what I see. And I just, it's like, you, you, can, you can sit there and say, said, I just had a conversation with my friend, one of my best friends, and he's rereading the Bible right now. He's Catholic based. And he's like literally reading the Bible from cover to cover. That's what he decided to do. And he's telling me all this. And I'm sitting in and I'm listening to him for like over an hour the other day. It's a great friend of mine. We just see differently. Totally fine. I like listening to him. And he's telling me all the, all my, but this story has so many eyewitnesses. Of it. Okay. And then just, but then I just go right back to my decodes and I'm like, okay, well then how do you explain a scripted reality then? How do you explain Tesla, Nikolai Tesla getting the 27th card of his birthday and the word currency equals 27? That's what the guy's known for. How do you explain that? How do you explain the band members of Pink Floyd coming together and I showed how they were destined to come together? How do you explain uh, Twisted Sister coming together because they were supposed to? How do you explain uh, Led Zeppelin coming together or the Beatles coming together when I could clearly show you the support that they had no choice to come together as a band? So if they didn't have a choice, well, is that the devil? Is that God? How would you, how would you figure that out? How do you, how do you, how do you make sense of that? So many things I've shown time and time again, showing that whatever is, whatever created this reality operates it remote control. It does it, it does it however it wants to control it. And I, I can't describe it any other way, ladies and gentlemen. I would be irresponsible if I give you any other answer, any other way from that, the, the, like, what's your final breakdown? What's your final answer? Man, mankind's being used. I would be, I would go completely, I would lie to myself if I were to tell you something different based on the 450 plus videos I have showing the same patterns over and over and over and over. And then I look at my life. All the way back, I was just decoding myself. I was just decoding the, my childhood home that I grew, that I was born into. <sighs> my life has been scripted since I came into this world. What am I going to say? The devil did it? That's why I think life's a joke. I don't, I don't take it serious. I can't, it can't be. That's why I don't have fear. I don't, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid that I'm, I'm not going to make it or I'm going to be burned in the lake of fire. I'm not afraid of that shit. That's the worst way to live your life. I did it growing up.
I lived in that fight or flight state. What a miserable way to live your life. That's not unconditional love. That's misery. If I, if I were to, if, see, I, I, it's not about me. If I were to show all of you a breakdown of decoding Logan, I would break down my whole life. I would blow your mind to show you the synchronicities. It would be so undeniable, it would make your head spin. And it's not just my life. It's not, it's not just me. I'm not the only one. I'm just one spoke in the wheel. I show this in my Prison Planet Part 2 series. I was very vulnerable, and I showed all my, my family. I have, just have one sister. My mom, my dad, me, and my sister, I showed all our four birth, all our birth cards and our birthdays and how it all added up and how it showed you it led to Pi. Undeniable that I live in a scripted reality and my parents live in a scripted reality and my sister does and they don't even know it. I can't even have this conversation with them. They, they wouldn't understand it. That's why like, you gotta be nuts. You gotta be insane to live in this world. And being insane is what you want to be. You want to be the need. I don't want to be the haystack. The haystack is Jesus is the savior and you got to follow this way. That's the haystack. I want to be the needle in the haystack. Any, any story in this reality is part of this machine. I don't want to, I'm not, I, I'm becoming less and less part of this existence. That's why I become a minimalist. I'm just like, meh. You, you, once you name a deity, once you add a, na a title to, onto God, it, how can it be the creator? The, like the ultimate creator. <sighs> Maggie's asking, we're, we're walking tests and meets. Well, I don't like using the word meat suit because that's very like, I don't know, for me. Right? I'm not saying this will be for you, but for me, when I say meat suit, I, it's kind of like not being grateful for my body. Meat suit is very derog. For me, it's very derogatory. I know it's for fun, right? Lots of people, I'm just joking around, but no, but I mean, like I'm grateful that I got this avatar. Super grateful that I got this. That's why a lot of people make fun of me. I like, I'm a gratitude junkie. And when I brush my teeth, I'm like talking to my teeth. My, those teeth, man, they, those things have saved me. Chewing all the food all those years. I try to be grateful for my bicycle. I ride the bike to the gym back. I like it's giving thanks to my bike for riding me back and forth. That's the layer of consciousness I'm at. So are we walking tests? I, I, I think that this reality is not what any of us think it is. I think it's beyond our comprehend, comprehension. I think that we are being utilized for the creation of something else that just no one can put into perspective. It's kind of like the cells in your body. Imagine you're, you could talk to one of your cells in your body. The tr you have tr they say you have trillions of cells. Even if you had millions, imagine you had to name everyone and you get to form a relationship with all the cells in your body. Imagine you, you got emotionally reactive towards the cells that died. You constantly have death going on in your body. You can't correlate that to the outside world. If you, if you imagine if you had millions of people around you that you knew personally dying every day or hundreds of that, like there's cells in your body constantly dying, countless cells dying for your existence that you don't pay any attention to. Part of your machine. They're working for you. You don't have to tell them what to do. They're already programmed to do certain things, to give you this, to give you that. Without those cells in your body, you wouldn't be here. We don't pay attention to that though. We don't pay attention to the microcosm. There's single celled organisms down there. We don't pay any attention to them because life gets in the way. Too busy with life. But just what level of consciousness are you at right now? And then, you know, I think there's just a, I think we're being, we're being used and harvested for our energy, but that is creating something and it's beyond our comprehension. We just can't comprehend it. That's, I just, that's the only way that I can chalk it up for how this reality works.
Polyhedral dice are more associated with Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I mean, if I were to use, I have dice here. I have like four of them on my desk right here. I just, I just have them here. Sometimes I'll mess with them. Um, but it's like, you know, if you're looking for a sign, you've done, folks, you've all done this. God, just give me a sign. And you'll get your sign. That's why I'm saying, you, when you get in tune with this reality, you don't got to say a damn thing. I'm telling you, you'll wake up. When you wait, the next time you have a song pop in your head, try to be consciously aware of that song. Out of the blue, some song pops in your head. Like, where the hell did that come from? When you can say, why am I singing that song? You're in the, you're, congratulate yourself. Because life hasn't sucked you dry. It's when you don't pay attention to the song that pops in your head because you're too busy. Like, I'm late for this appointment. And you don't pay attention to the song. Or you're driving and you're on the phone or you're busy with something and you don't hear the message you're supposed to hear. Or you don't see the time on the clock. That's a message for you. When I wake up in the morning, I check, I check my phone and I see what time it is. I know that's a message. When I plug my phone in and my battery percentage pops up, I know that's a message. I know it is. Everything's trying to talk to you. Besides the things that are fixated, like your address, your latitude, longitude, your phone number. So the U channel saying, why is there such negativity at such a great scale and evil in the world? Well, my answer to that is, I, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. Well, what do you, I, I would say, what are you talking about? Uh, what, what negativity? You know, you know why I'm saying that? Because I don't turn on the mainstream. I don't subject myself to it. So it doesn't exist in my world. Remember that my world, I'm just an extra in your world. So you would say, well, it exists in my world. Well, then turn it off and then it won't exist in your world anymore. Then you know what you're going to say? Well, it's still going to be there. Okay, great, but you're letting it affect you. It's having an impact on the way you live your life because you choose to tune into it. It's going to exist whether or not you're there. Don't think you're going to go be the savior of the world. Don't think you're going to go out there and, and you, oh, I'm going to be the change. Don't think you're going to go change the collective. You're, you, I think you're out of your mind if you think that's the case. And you say, you'll justify it. Well, it's going to start with one. Some people are designed, like I see people, I see, some people are designed to go into the, the rah-rahs and blow from the horn and go scream and yell and fight the system. And see, when I see someone like that, you know what it does for me? I get grateful. I look at that person and I'm like, I am so glad that I didn't get that screenplay. That's what, I, that's what I do with that. So I'm like, man, that's got to be a tough one. To have to get up and do that grind every day. So glad I'm not there. So it makes me grateful. So evil in the world, that's subjective, right? I Turn it off. It's not going to go away if you turn it off but it's not going to exist in your reality anymore. That's what I, that's what I think. <clears throat> Lighthouse prankster. Oh, interesting avatar name is asking Logan, what God do you believe in, bro? Well, define God. Are you talking about God in the one that rules over this reality? That, that made you as a human being? So we need to create the foundation. I'm not, I'm not sure. You need to be more specific. What, what, God, what do you mean? What God do I believe in? You have monotheism and polytheism. You have a, the Abrahamic religions, which are, which are mono, which means one. They believe just in one. 
and then you have the then you have the poly which is multiple are you referencing mono poly i i don't know what are you what are you referencing and, and then my simple answer was <clears throat> that whatever whatever created this reality doesn't have a name you can't define it that, that that's that's where i stand in that so do i believe in a creator well i mean everything has a creator even if we live inside of a supercomputer and it's the computer that's creating this reality and we're just computer fragments and we're just, you know, we're just illusions of light and all these kind of theoretical positions, the hologram universe, all stuff, it's some, there still needs to be something that's creating that. Can you, we, but you can't define it. See, what we're doing as human beings, we're looking to define things. We're trying to find it. We're trying to break it down. We're trying to decode it. We're trying to give it a definition. We're trying to give it a title. That's what, that's what, that's what most human beings are trying to do. They're trying to define it. So I would need to dig more. Like we need to go. Like what? What, what do you think? Well, God, what? God of this world? Would you, are we separating God from this world? This is a different logos. Is different. Is there many God? Like what is it? Mono, poly. What, what? Which one would it be for you? To get it into the foundation, to the context. Can you explain disappearing belongings? Uh, no. I never had that happen, and any time that I ever have, it was misplaced. So if it's something like supernatural disappearing, I couldn't explain that to you. Can I get my take on the potential hive mind? Well, I mean, essentially, you could say this whole reality is a hive mind. There is these references to Pandora's box. I've talked about this extensively. A lot of decoders besides myself have talked about Pandora's box extensively. Pandora's box, of course, individually being your mind. And then Pandora's box being earth. Pandora's box being in mythology. Prometheus and his brother Epimetheus. Forethought, afterthought. Prometheus being talked about as the God that created mankind from clay. Prometheus being tied to uh, Pluto and the underworld decoded Prometheus. Prometheus in Greek mythology is said to have created man from clay. Clay is dirt. Prometheus represents the underworld in dirt. And then you get the theology expressions of Jesus saying, your father's the devil. <laughs> what to believe? So the hive mind is portrayed through this Pandora's box principle. And, uh, you know, you get the 45th element rhodium, which is tied to the, the rose that gives the bees honey. You get into the 17th century secret society called the Rosicrucians. Maybe you need to go join that club and they're going to have some nuggets there. All of these secret societies are going to have uh, layers of information that will only help your, um, your gradual uh, move towards the next chapters of your life if you're willing to pay attention if you feel the instinct and the urge to do it but the hive mind to me would be tied to pandora's box pandora's top box would be tied to the collective consciousness and the collective consciousness would be a harvesting energy center and that would be feeding the machine and the machine is pandora's box it just goes all around robin and of course i think personally that this entire reality is a big ponzi scheme Meaning that anything inside this self-contained system is part of the machine. So you have, I mean, why are the big three religions, the Abrahamic religions, why are they all located in the holy city of Jerusalem? Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, they're all inside the holy city of Jerusalem. Why is that? It's a Ponzi scheme. Why does there have to be three? Why can't you just have one? confuses you and you have see when you're given a choice it's like you open up a box of donuts Krispy Kreme donuts you got six donuts in there which one are you gonna pick which one are you gonna eat first 
the one that's the most appealing. Maybe you like chocolate covered. You're going to pick that one. Maybe someone likes the jelly donut. They're going to pick that one. Same thing with religion. You open up the box of religion and there's going to be all these religious donuts in there. Which one? You, which one's going to look better for you? But they're all made from the Krispy, Krispy Kreme factory. It's a big Ponzi scheme. That's why it's called religion, religion, to do it again. That's not me being anti-spiritual and all that kind of stuff, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not, be, I'm not giving you that sense of, like, that's not how my direction is. I'm just like, it's just like, be no part of this world. And then you have all these religious constructs. It's just such a contradiction. You have the whole story of Jesus, Jesus and be, being I'm no part of this world. Okay, but then it says in Luke 22, verses 10, follow me into the house with a man bearing a pitcher of water. Well, that's the house of Aquarius. That's part of this construct. So wait a minute. You're telling me you don't want me to be a part of it, but then you tell me to follow into the house of Aquarius, which is the next age that we're in. Well, well come on, man. Well, which is it? Be no part of this world, but you want me to suck down your blood and eat your wafers. What, what is it, man? Those are made here on earth. Why would you want me to do that? Get it right. What, which, it, which way is it? Why can't you just be straight up with me? No, you got to dance around with these ridiculous allegories. That's why I believe it's a Ponzi scheme. If it doesn't get you this way, it's going to get you this way. You know, I've used this analogy before. Those of you that are women out there, right? You're notorious for having these one-mile walk-in closets. You got 5,000 pairs of shoes. Then you got to go to the mall the next day because like, I, I ain't got that pair though. I got to get those red pumps, man. And then you're the husband. You're like, oh my God, you got 5,000 pairs of shoes. I know, but I don't have these, babe. I, I, these shoes I need. That's how God is. It's like, well, I ain't got that person worshiping me. So I'm going to throw those red pair of shoes out at the mall. Here's the new religion. Oh, you don't want to believe in that one? Okay, well, here's the red shoes. Here's the jelly donut. <laughs> God is like a woman's walk-in closet. It owns everything. 50 million pairs of jeans, 5,000 pairs of shoes, every known color of bras and panties. That's, that's religion. That's why there's 10,000 religions. What happened? What's wrong with one? How about one? How about just one? Take just one. That's hive mind. Someone's asking about joining a women's Masonic group. Well, I mean, if you feel the urge to do it, there's value in any group that you join, folks. There's going to be value there. There's going to be utility there that you can use for yourself. Seven Eleven. Someone's asking about Seven Eleven. It's tied to the sun. 711, if you see the number 711, 117, 171, it is tied to the sun. Let me take you on a little trip. <clears throat> Let's take you on a trip. There you go. This right here is off of my Superstar Decoded Part 2. I would highly encourage all of you to watch the series on the Superstar. This right here is, if there's a humdinger of all humdingers when it comes to nature, it is this one right here. See, this right here is the sun rising or setting exactly the same time every month for 13 months straight? 
You can't have 12, you must have 13 to get it exactly like this. And you'll notice that it makes this boomerang shape. 13 months. Here's June. So you have December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. It has to be December to December or June to June. And when you make a pattern and you put it together and you move it on its side, look at what it makes. The big W. And there's a movie reference in here. 1956 movie called It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. Amazing movie, amazing cast. There was $350,000 buried under this big W in Santa Rosa Park in California. And these people are after it. A big W. And the big W is the sun. It's the son of God. Okay, and it's this, this is the sine wave right here, folks. This is the wave you're stuck in. The sin wave. The sine wave. That's why Jesus says, I'll take your sins away. It's tied to the sun. This is it. So the 7-Eleven, and it's a light bulb. See the pattern this thing makes? Well, this right here is a light bulb. Look at the pattern. See, what did they fashion the light bulb around? The damn sun. The patterns of the sun. It's right there. This is filament. You can't get any more in-your-face humdinger than you can get right here. There is the sun inside of a light, and it's inside of a bulb, which is earth. So if somebody says, oh, the earth's not round, they're full of shit. Because it most certainly has a dome over it. Has an eggshell over it. That's why light bulbs are made that way. Okay, and that's the pattern, and it makes the one, seven, one pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One, seven, one. That's the sun, ladies and gentlemen. It's inside of your, they used to be, since then, now they started using LED, but these are filaments. And they used to make it with this element called tungsten. Right here. That's why it's called, and this is the W. There's the W right there. It's called Wolfram. And it's tied to Jesus and the Christ. They're both 31 and 35, which is a match to the latitude, longitude of Bethlehem, the birth city of the Christ. Jesus is the son of God. What do you think it is? Referencing the sun. There's the, the moon's in there too. That's why, uh, that's why Christmas is, is the birth of the sun. It comes out of the tomb. What gets resurrected on December 25th? The sun. The sun. It's all about the sun, folks. The big W. Okay? This is solar. That's why it's the solar calendar. It's solar based. That's why the Catholic Church worships the solar calendar. The sun. The son of God. That's why they use Jesus. Why do you think they inaugurate presidents with the Bible? It's all sun worship, folks. You can't get any more clear than this. It doesn't get any more clear than this, ladies and gentlemen. You're talking about a nature-based reality. Sun worship. That's what Jesus Christ is tied to. The sun and the moon. The moon is the consort of the sun. The as above, the sun's like, oh, hey, I need a wife. Oh, let me make the moon. And now the sun is the moon at night. I mean, the moon is the sun at night. It's so simple, but we, we just, they, then, then the Roman Catholic Church, they create a man out of this. That's why Julius Caesar is J.C. Jim Carrey, J.C. plays Yes Man, Yeshua Man. He plays in uh, the, the movie um, where he becomes God. Jim Carrey, the Truman Show, walking up the steps out into heaven. I mean, you just start to look at this stuff. You can see it's obviously very crystal clear. Jim Carrey, the Jim Carrey, ladies and gentlemen. Why, why, why did they pick Jim Carrey? To play all these characters, James Carey. Why did they pick him? Well, he has the initials JC, number one. 
Number two, he is born on January 17th. 17th is the star card in the tarot. And his birth card, when you go to the cards of illumination, January 17th is the 36th card in the deck. It's the 10 of diamonds. Jesus Christ is 36, right there. This converts into the tarot, right here. And it's the 74th card in the deck, which is Wolfram and Tungsten. You think this is an accident? And then you would say, well, okay, wait a minute. Did, 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 did Jim Carrey's parents name him Jim, James Eugene Carey because they knew he was going to be Jesus Christ? Come on. Bruce Almighty plays God. Truman Show. Kristoff on the moon. It's just so obvious, this stuff. This guy didn't have a choice but to be a comedian and play the Jesus Christ character. He's got all the cards set up for this way. I've done so much with the Truman Show. And people are still, oh, well, no, no, no. Like, dude, what, are you, what planet are you on, man? You just don't want to, you just don't want to, you don't want to see it. That's totally fine. My channel is not for the faint of heart. I'm not the Haystack channel. I am not that channel. I'm not in this for likes. I'm not in this for subscribers. I'm not interested in monetizing my channel to make buku bucks off of the ads. And I want to keep this where you have, uh, you can enjoy the presentations. And if you're here, you're supposed to be here to watch it. I'm not the haystack. I'm not for everybody. Some people don't like the way I look. Some people don't like my hair. Some people don't like my shirts. Some people don't like the way I talk. Some people don't like the way how loud and visceral I can be. I'm not here for you. Some people, you're talking too loud. Your music's too loud. Dude, I'm not here to create for you, man. What do you think I'm going to, you want to pay me to create a video? It's like, you're not, you, all you do is complain. Get the hell out of here, man. I'm not here for you. Go find your truth somewhere else. This is where I'm at in my reality, folks, because people just can't see it. And I'm like, where, where are you, what are you looking at? <clears throat> Once you see it, you, you don't unsee it. Mankind is being used. And if you want to believe in a devil, then the devil's using everybody and you ain't got a chance in hell of getting out of here. No pun intended. So you would obviously think beyond that. Yeah, I don't know about the sun, uh, Maggie. Um, why does the sun look like it has something in front of it? Uh, you know, like, I don't know what you see through your eyes. You know, there are a lot of variables that go into, like, like look at the sun with a filter and a telescope. You know, I would think giving it a fair share with that, that tool would be a little bit of a different variable than just, you know, like, there are some people say, well, the sun used to be really yellow, now it's really white. And, like, I see both. Jesse's saying, is there really something behind our reality that affects it by doing these things? I, I, I mean, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, Jesse, I, I have, I mean, I have over, I mean, it's technically I have over 500 decodes. I want you to think about this. I have over 500 decodes right now. There's only 457, but I got over 500. Done. And my final answer is mankind's being used. By what? I can't give you that answer. I've narrowed it down to some possibilities through the ideas of what's on the world stage. You know, there was a movie called Cabin in the Woods. I broke it down. I mean, if you want to watch, if I, I, I'm going to show you just in real time. If you want to watch a decode of mine That was really like kind of undeniable. Watch this greatest show on earth. That'll show you a scripted reality like I like no other. And this is folks, my, that that's it. Your your earth is the greatest show on earth. 
Okay? It's it's a movie. You're in a you're in a damn reality show. And it's the greatest show on earth. And all these people they all have like I broke down Amazon, right? Jeff Bezos. He think he had a choice. You may not like his position. You may think he's this, you may think he's that. You think he's got it. You think he has a hall pass from the voice in his head? You think he's an he's, he's an errant as they call it? like you think you're going to break free? As I continue to do this research and I mean like People say, oh, you think you're broken free? Well, fuck. I've done so much work on myself and decoding, and I still see the patterns in my life. So break free from what? This one right here, I, I broke down. Like my, my mother, who's a devout JW, sends me a photograph of, of uh, her, the cat that, that I found as in a, uh, as on the side of the road. This cat right here, Russian blue, right? My mom sends me this picture right here. She sets this up in stages. His name's Grady, right? We, I found him, South Carolina. She sets and stages this thing's up right here. This is right from her. She puts the seven of spades in there to stage the card for that. And I decoded it and, I, and it was mind blowing. My mom didn't even know. She has no idea that her life is scripted. She has no clue. Zero clue, folks. I can't have conversations like this with people. I'm not the haystack. This channel is not the haystack, man. If you came looking for the popular vote, if you came and looking here for things that make you feel warm and fuzzy inside, this ain't the channel for you. I'm a decoder. I'm a researcher. I'm a scientist. I'm... You know, I'm a fan of the esoteric. I'm a, yeah, I'm a fan of God. Because I believe that God's using me to experience its own reality through. That's the best answer I can tell all of you. It's the only thing that logically makes any even sense. From the time I can remember, my life has been a script. And I continually see the patterns over and over from the places I go to. It's crazy. <clears throat> Uh, Pascal is asking me about a Nibiru. I already did a decode on Nibiru. I already, I, I did that already. Again, if you just go to my channel and you go to the search engine here, I did it right here. I did it like uh, four years ago. This is outdated. I probably need to do it. This is like old methodology, but I already did wormwood in Nibiru. So this is this is talking about August, the month of August. Okay, Revelation 8, verses 11. And Wormwood. These are allegorical. It's so hard to define the stories in that book. I know they're allegorical, folks, because there's never been a talking snake ever in the history of mankind. Just once. And it's never happened again. How am I supposed to believe that? Have you ever had a snake talk to you? See, if there were snakes talking to people, then I would really wouldn't be so reluctant to, to not believe in that story. But because it's never happened again before in the history of mankind, I'm very reluctant in believing in a story like that. Lee, uh, so let me give you a perfect example of maybe through free will choosing th something, okay? Uh, Lee saying, I have the same start to my phone number, 808 area code, and you are, aren't you the king of clubs? Yes. So um, I, yes, king of clubs, 808, uh, I used to. I, I, I used to have that number. 
the 808. Now, when I got that number, it's a, that's a prefix to Hawaii. The reason, and I got that years ago, the reason, and this is before I started doing any like heavy decoding at the layers that I'm at right now. I got that number because I, my thing was like, I'm going to attract Hawaii into my life. This is when I was like into more, you know, per, uh, personal development. So I'm like, all right, just get, I'll get the Hawaii phone number and I'll move to Hawaii. Not knowing the 808 was tied to time travel, not knowing the 808 was tied to radium, not knowing 88 was tied to yttrium and time travel and 88 miles. I, I wasn't paying attention to that. Your phone number right now will tell you a little bit about who you are. Take all the di digits and add them up. Not the, the country calling code, but area code and the number. You can add in the country code one because like Mexico is plus five, two. For 52 is prison planet. Here I am talking about prison planet. Came out with my prison planet series when I came to Mexico. Go figure, right? Plus five, two calling country code. I come out with my prison planet pr series and prison planet is 52. Coincidence? There's no coincidences in life. Everything happens for a reason because it's supposed to happen. That's why you say that. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, because it's in your screenplay. It's supposed to happen. But I mean, consciously what I did was uh, last, was it last year? After I was decoding, I found some big nuggets. I found out that my social security, on the back of your social security card, for you, those of you that are in the US, there's, I think it's a blue number. There's gonna be a, uh, let me see if I can show it to you because this will be kind of useful for you. Hold on. I know some of you will be interested in this. Oh, they already have <laughs> this little Federal Reserve is, is disputing. Oh, you can't make purchases. Okay. Hang on a second. Um, let me show you real quick. So I started, I was looking at social security cards and <clears throat> on the back, on the back of the social security card, there's this, um, this is a British one, I think, but there'll be a number and that number uh, will be this number will be attached to a federal bank, a federal reserve bank somewhere in the U.S. Okay, so I so I looked mine up, and mine is tied to St. Louis. And this is how scripted my reality is now, folks. Okay, I didn't choose my damn social security card, right? All right, so I I was St. Louis. It's on Locust Street. This one right here, Broadway and Locust. This is where my social security card's attached to, right? So then, of course, I'm like, oh, I was looking at the phone number and look at what, uh, well, look at what uh, area code it is. 314. My damn last name is Payette. So my social security card is tied to the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank, which has an area code of 314, and my last name is Payette, which is Pi. Really? So I changed my phone number to 314. That's what I have now. I have a US number, which I don't really use, but I changed it to three. So I consciously, did I consciously choose that or did the voice of my head choose it? Voice in my head chose it. So did I consciously do that through free will? I can't prove that. I don't know, but I changed it. So now I have a 314 area code. And I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if this is going to change. I wonder what's going to happen. But what are the odds that my damn social security card is tied to the Federal Bank of St. Louis, which has an area code of 314, which is Pi, and my last name's Payette? What do you think the odds would be? Scripted reality, or you think that's just a mere coincidence?
So action potential says English is the deceptive language of the serpent. Well, I would totally disagree with you there. I don't know what you would bring to court to support that. Uh, I've broken down Hebrew, Greek, Russian, acrylic, Spanish, Latin. Are they deceptive too? You might as well just say every language is deceptive. Every language has deception in it. And then you'd have to correlate that to like, what does that mean? So I'm not here to take away your beliefs. I'm not here to get in a, a debate or a pissing match. If you think that English is the deceptive language of the serpent, well, that's, that's your, on you. But I can assure you that it's far beyond the English language. Far beyond it. But that's just my truth, right? I'm not, like I said, you believe whatever you want to believe. If you think English is the deceptive language of the serpent, well, that, that's great. Go with that. So I am Cairo says, maybe life wouldn't work if everybody knew it was scripted. Maybe. Although I feel like that's going to be the big reveal. I think that is what will make life work. When people can just surrender to their code instead of trying to fight their code. See, it's very challenging to work with this concept because if you think in the yugas, if you think in cycles then you would realize that you're the, you, you, seemingly you're the farthest away from source energy. So how does life look like when you're in tune with source energy? How, how, how would that look? What, what kind of downloads would you get? Uh, that's the question. All right, let's get into some more uh, sneak peeks. Uh, I see a lot of comments, and I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. You're all amazing. Um, so let's let 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 me jump into um, <laughs> let me jump into some uh, some some astrology, okay? And uh, get this set up, okay. Here we go. You guys, guys and gals ready? Here we go. Another sneak peek. So, um, well, this isn't even, well, actually, yeah, this is going to be part of my nanotechnology decoded. Uh, I've already shown this, but this is, I have a nanotechnology decoded right here. This is going to be on my Patreon, nanotech. Uh, and, you know, like, are we all just part of this? Are we all just part of this nanotech without a choice? You know, like, what are we breathing in? Uh, I've, I've, I can't say this and verify it to be absolutely one plus one equals two fact truth. But what I, what I've heard and read is that we all have this inside of us. Okay. It's already in us through the air we breathe, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So it's inevitable. Now I'm not going to say that's one plus one equals two fact. It's a pure theoretical position of mine. Okay. So take it or leave it. But what I, what, I, what I wanted to show you here, this, again, this is not the first time I've shown this, but you see this, this right here was the, um, the patent that came out um, for this technology. I'm, I'm going to be very loose with the words. You're going to have to read this. Okay. Um, this technology came out in, and it was the, the date of this was 
January 10th, 2017. Okay. And there are so many ways to look at this. They filed this in 2013. All right. And these are the cards that are associated with the filing date and then the actual date of the patent. Okay. And this, this card right here is the card of the dreamer. This is the card of being put to sleep. This one. This card right here, by the way, is the birth card of Hugo Weaving, who played Mr. Smith. All right? So just try to correlate what I'm telling you here. Nanotechnology, the date of the patent, January 10th, 2017, is the four of spades. And Hugo Weaving, the guy they cast to play Mr. Smith for The Matrix, is the four of spades. Okay, just so we have that as the foundation now, you can put two and two together what this possibly could mean. Okay, now I had come out with this and I had shown this is the astrological map. Once again, astrology coming through strong as an ox here. All right, this being the astrological map for that January 10th, 2017 day. Now I got this at 9 a.m. in Washington, D.C., this is who was behind it, along with the United States Army. That's who ordered it, by the way. Okay? The applicants were some of these colleges, MIT, et cetera, et cetera. But it was uh, requested by the, the military. Okay? So just take that into consideration. This is the astrological map when this thing got approved, or the, the date of the applicant, I should say. And, of course, this was the humdinger of them all was the placement of Mercury the messenger. It was in the 19th Nashakra. And what was, the, what, was, what was it called, folks? I'm not even going to say it. What was the number attached to that word? 19. Mercury is the messenger. Nanotech. The messenger. For this patent, Mr. Smith and Mercury right there, okay, with Pluto there as well and Kronos in conjunct with the sun. Now, this may not exactly be in the house because I don't know if it was at 9 a.m. exactly, so the house may change. The zodiac sign will not. And there was the big clue, obviously, because Pfizer is a match to the element Mercury. You see it right there? You can't miss it. And it's in the 19th Nashakra. Okay? So if your jaw wasn't on the... Maybe your jaw's on the floor, right? If this is the first time you've seen this, and this is across the way from Gemini, which represents D-N-A. Okay? The prison. All right? That's just for starters. Now, I'm showing you this as the starting point which leads me into this map right here. And this is the astrological map for the upcoming month of December. I think this is December 15th, 2023. This is sidereal again. All right. I'm showing you this because the position of Rahu, which is the dragon's head and K2, the dragon's tail, this axis right here. All right. This is when... Rahu moves into Pisces, okay? It's, it's at 27 degrees, matching the 27th Nashaktra. Now, Ravadi, Ravadi is a Nashaktra of spirituality. It's, it's a, it's, Rahu comes in here, and Rahu is like, wants to blow everything out of proportion. Rahu is part of the Asudas, which is part of the demon, the, which demon meaning desire, and it comes into the sign of Pisces, which is a watery sign. Pisces represents the biology of the body and water. And it's the hangman right here. Now, along with Rahu moving into this position in this, this upcoming December, you have it conjunct, meaning it's right next to the wound of Chiron. The wound of Chiron. Now, the 27th Nashakra is tied to this card right here, which is a card of chaos and order. 
chaos and order. This is a lot of fighting, debating, arguments. And then, of course, order has to come from that. So when Rahu comes into this spiritual Ravadi, what kind of energy are we looking at as a collective? And see, the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, this is what you want to be consciously aware of right here. Are you going to be reacting to the situations that come into your life? Or will you observe and then act? There will be a big difference. The energy coming in, because Rahu has been here in Aries for a while, which is a much different energy. This is a lot of service to self. Okay? A lot of service to self. A lot of fire energy. Now it moves into a spiritual nashatra. And of course, you would think it's the, the landlord is the Ravadi, right? The landlord is Pisces. Rahu comes in here, who is the ultimate desire, and it comes into the landlord of Pisces. And Pisces is like the mystic, the spiritual one. So as a collective consciousness, this energy coming in will start to make you observe your spirituality, whatever you define that as. Whatever you define that as, and you're, the wounds here now, so it will start to probably fester here with the questioning of which, what is my path now? Surrendering to a path. And I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're married, if you've got a relationship, this is a time where you could have some chaos and order. And, 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 and the thing is, and I'm saying this loosely, because I know that, that arguments can happen anytime. But I'm saying is the way to win the game, if there is such a thing, is to be non-reactive. Because technically, when Rahu comes in here, it doesn't like to be here. Because it's a spirit, like Rahu wants to have fun, blow things out of proportion. It's the desire. You come into Ravadi and then it's like, you start to look at your spirituality. It's time to get serious. It's time to get down to business. And it's a surrendering layer to this. And then you got your wound here. You may have to be faced with the wound here now if you have something here energetically. Because across the way here, K2, sitting right here in Chitra, it's in Virgo. This is a, this is a house of, of, uh, of legacy. Virgo is like, it's health and well. That's why all these layers are right here. These are the cards that represent what I'm showing you here. K2 is typically the area of your life of, of what you want to look at. Like it's been there, done that. Rahu is going to make you, is going to want to desire things, blow things out of proportion. And then K2 is kind of like been there, done that. A lot of uh, astrologers are going to say you want to focus on the K2. Well, K2 is in the 14th Nashakshar in the 6th house of Virgo. 6th house of Virgo is the lovers. So I would feel that many of you will have to focus on your relationships. And it's in the 14th Nashatra, and that's temperance. Many of you will be faced to focus on your relationships and to maintain a sense of balance. This will also play out in the role of your health and wellness because Virgo represents health. So these are the bullet points to take into consideration. Health, balance, focusing on not being critical of other people and yourself and a way to alleviate these burdens by averages k2 asks you to meditate focus on meditating on the situation because you may have some areas over here where there's some chaos and order here coming into this new 27th nashatra different than the number one this is more service to self. And then this, now you're faced with your mystical side of life. It may not want to do that. And if you're in a partnership, you may have some challenges with that as well. Now, the big thing that I want to show you, because I showed you this, is look at where Mercury is, folks. Right here. It's right exactly in that 19th Nashakshara again. So what I'm going to say very loosely very, very loosely now as a possibility that this shit right here, this could get activated with this upcoming December 2023 and what you're looking at here. 
Okay. This, this could get activated. I, I don't know what that means. And I'm saying it as a possibility. Please hear what I'm saying. It is a possibility. I'm not saying it's absolute, but there's a reason why this is here and why this was granted as a patent or filed as a patent or I was, yeah, it was, it was granted date of the patent. And this is why this is Mr. Smith's card. Okay. When you kind of lay them all out, what is this whole thing got to do? And Mercury being the messenger, you see this technology is a messenger. It's like this buckyball, when it opens up, there's a message inside. That's kind of what it correlates to of how, when you describe this technology. Okay. And it's clear that the 19 and Mercury being there, it's kind of a no brainer. And this being 80 and 80, that's kind of a no brainer. And then just maybe this is activated here and you have it conjunct with the sun. Now this is very loose because the sun ain't going to last very long here. This is December. This is Sagittarius. It just got here. So it's got, you know, a good 30 days here, but, um, this is a time, ladies and gentlemen, to keep quiet, to be still, you know, not react. I'm telling you right now, if you want to win this game, if there is such a thing, start being an observer of your reality, not acting. You may have your, bus your, bu your buttons get pushed here. Your, your wound being activated here, your spirituality, what you think is your spirituality getting questioned. You don't need to defend your position in life. Just remember that because that is reacting. Someone comes up and says, I don't like the way you do that. What are you going to, how are you going to behave? See this technology right here, whatever it is. I'm telling you right now, folks, this technology is a, is a carrier of a messenger. That's how I feel it works. I'm not here to put the fear of God of you in here. I'm not, I'm not here to, and these, these are just my opinions and this is for educational purposes only. This is very vanilla because I'm just showing you the possibilities here. But I'm telling you right now, see, you want to focus on being balanced. You want to focus on your health. So right now, if your health sucks, if, the, if you haven't got a blood panel done in the past six months, you're not balanced. That's my opinion. I'm not here to offer you any medical advice, but if you haven't had a blood panel done in six months to a year, you need to get one done to see how your blood is. They're not expensive. Even if you ain't got insurance, you can get a third party to test your blood for 150 bucks. It's super cheap in the US especially. This is all Virgo. Virgo is your health. Your health and then your spirituality, these go hand in hand right here. This is what we're moving into collectively in December of 2023. And just maybe this Mercury planetary position here, something may get activated here. I don't know. But there's a reason why this was here for the grant of this technology, the date. And this is tied to Mr. Smith. And you can just use your mind. You can use your imagination on why that is. When you correlate that to the tarot, folks, to get the picture. Okay. You can see what's going on. This is a sleep. This is death. A sleep. This can be a death. This can be a sleep. This could be dreaming. This is Xenon. This could be tied, you know, your vo the voice in your head. There's so many ways to look at this. So rather than living a life of fear here with this information, I'm giving you nuggets to take a look at to consider the possibilities of the energy coming in because it's going to be here for a while. Okay. It's going to be here for a while. Besides all the other planetary positions. This is going to be here for us, especially with Pluto. Like Pluto, Pluto is in Capricorn. I know you're going to hear some people say, oh, no, it's in Aquarius. Well, if you look up to the sky, and it, sky is not. Let me just show all of you, just so we can be very crystal clear. I'm a one plus one equals two kind of guy. I don't know about you. This is stellarium-web.org. Let me get it nighttime and show you. Here are the constellations. 
Here is the ecliptic, the line, the imaginary line that the 12 constellations, the sun, the moon, the planets all run on. Now, if I type in Pluto here, okay, there it is. Where is Pluto at? Right here. Do you see it anywhere near Aquarius? Aquarius is way the hell over here. Pluto's right here. How can it be in Aquarius when it's right there? It's, it's, it's still kind of like, it's technically in Capricorn right now. It ain't anywhere near Aquarius. That's why it's right there. It's, it will be in Capricorn till 2039. It will be here eventually, but not till 2040, 2039. Right here. You see, if you follow Bashir's work, he says the Phoenix event's going to happen in 2040. Well, that's right around the time when Pluto enters into Aquarius. So if you're using your logic and common sense, Pluto, the destroyer, moves into Aquarius, which seemingly is in the age that we're in right now, on tw in 2039, 2040. And you know what this is? This is the wrecking ball. It's over here right now, and it will be here. Okay? It, why in Capricorn? Because it's, its job right now is to remove the dead wood on Earth. That's what the job of Pluto is right here. And it will be doing that for the next 19 years or so, give or take. 2039, uh, yeah, a little bit longer than that. Okay? So I just, just take this stuff, in, and I'm telling you the big, the big humdinger is this. Which one are you doing? You've got to pay attention to your life. Are you more of a reaction-based person? That means you're habitually using the conformity of your life. Someone comes along. You're going to start to see. I'm telling you, this thing is a damn machine, man. This thing harvests energy. I'm telling you, it harvests energy. This is a, this is a team effort. I'm telling you. This is the beast right here. This is the beast. Mark my words, the 12 apostles in Jesus is the beast. I know some of you are not going to want to hear that. I don't care. This is the beast. That's why the Bible is littered with astrology. Littered with it. Okay? And this thing's a machine, man. And it wants your food. It wants your energy. You'll see. People will, I'm telling you, that's why I'm showing you this because this energy coming in, these are the possibilities that are going to be coming into your life. And if you're not ready for them, man, you're going to be going off of your habits and your programming. See, and you may react more than you'll act. So when you become good at this and you know this is coming in, you'll focus on your health. You'll focus on being balanced. If you listen, if you're 50 pounds overweight, what are you doing? You're not taking care of your temple. Stop making excuses. It's time. It's time to get yourself in check right here. It's time for you to get balanced. You know, you, you may become critical of life here. Well, be critical of yourself. Make yourself the best person you can be, the best little devil you can be. Meditate. Do visualization. And for all intents and purposes here, be an observer and do more action-based and less reaction-based because this wants you to react. It wants you to react. Okay? I'm telling you, this wants you to react. All right. So I, I hope that, I hope that you, all of you could see my interpretation of the charts, uh, you know, the way I see it, I have my own methodology beyond what a typical astrologer is going to show you. I like to throw in the tarot cards because I feel like they have merit and they work and I've shown it time and time again where it does work. Anybody, ask anybody that's got a reading for me, they'll tell, they'll tell you. The tar like it's, it's accurate. And it gives you the opportunity to look at your life and say, okay, well, where am I typically reacting in life? You'll start to see the patterns. Like Mars wants to get fed, it'll just have somebody cut you off in life. You'll be driving and someone cuts you off and you're like, and you get really angry. 
versus someone cuts you off and then you're like, whoa. And then Mars is like, you're not going to react? No. Go get your food somewhere else. How do I add up my phone number? You just take all the digits and add them up from a single perspective. Take all the digits, add them all up, and you're going to get a composite number, meaning more than one number. It's going to be typical. All of you should have a double digit. So you'll have that double digit, and then you'll have that, and then you can reduce it down to a single digit by adding up those two double digits. So the double digit will be the personality, and then the single digit will be the personification of that personality. All right, since all of you are here, I might as well show you one last big bomb. Uh, hold on, let me just pull it up. Just, this is all out of order, so I'm going to try to do the best I can. This is kind of like, so I did my beast decoded. It's only for the Patreons. This is kind of like beast two, but I'm going to give you a sneak peek, all of you, because I'm kind of, kind of in a flow, and I really kind of just feel like I, I need to really give this to you, this information, so... Hang on a sec. Um, I think it's a hundred and one. Hold on a sec. I'm almost almost there, folks. Just stick with me. This is really kind of important. I wish I would have shown this in my my decode, but I'll show it to you anyway. <clears throat> okay. I think I think it's a hundred and one digits. Okay. So this right here, folks. I want you to, I want you to just Focus on my narration. These words right here are all 13 of the apostles, including Jesus, at the Last Supper. All 12 plus, there's Jesus right there. And it's just interesting. Jesus, Jesus is 24, and then Thomas, his twin brother, is 24. Go figure, right? You couldn't have scripted it any better. So the total numerology in the original Greek language of the New Testament is 374, and look at what God equals in Chaldean. Okay? Now, you can see what I'm talking about. 
Okay. 374, 374, humdinger of all humdingers, the original language. Well, then what you do is you take this 374 and you bring it into the string of the golden ratio, the 1.61. And you'll see that that 374 occupies digit 99, 100, and 101. 99, 100, and 101. That's going to give you 300. Now, if you go study the fallen angel story, it says that a third of the angels fell from earth or from heaven. Well, 99 and 100 and 101 is 300. Okay, 300 is what I got it pegged to through that story. Then, when I show you where the 374 is in the string of the golden ratio, 99, 100, and 101, and we add it up, we get 457. Tied to the 12 apostles plus Jesus. 457 is the 88th prime number. And what is 88 in alchemy, folks? It's freaking raw. This is the source code right here. Ra is the sun god, folks. Okay? The 12 apostles in Jesus are tied to Ra. And now you have the correlation of the New Testament being tied all the way back to ancient Egypt and the Egyptian Book of the Dead, which is where the Bible came from. Period. This supports that. Through mathematics, alchemy, and numerology. Okay? So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You can't get any more ironclad than what I'm showing you from the original language. I showed this in the Chaldean. It might be decoded. It's on my Patreon. It's mind-blowing if you see that. But you can now see it. And this is tied to the Christ. It's the sun, folks. Okay? It's the beast. It's tied to the beast. Okay? Which is all tied to the... Uh, these stars, these constellations, all right? All of them play a role. The nashatras. This is what runs the reality, folks. You can call it whatever you want. You can say it's not real. It's a hologram. Well, okay. Well, I mean, how would you describe this then? This is the code behind the shit you don't see. And then you bring alchemy to get the picture. Radium. Ra. Ra. You know, there's a reason why the government is ruled over by Ra, Lib Ra, Lib Ra, Uranus, 226. Let me take you on a trip. 226, Radium 226. All these elements have what are called half-lives, meaning they decay. Okay, they have a decay chain. They start off and over time they they decay. They become this one radium becomes lead. Radium 226 has a 1600 year half-life. Well, that's kind of interesting because this is the address for the largest artificial intelligence gatherer in the world. Google 1600 Amphitheater Parkway. And that's interesting because the largest military in the world is located at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C. 1600. Do you think this is an accident? Do you think this is a mere coincidence that the White House is 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and Google, the artificial intelligence gather, their headquarters is 1600 and Radium's Half-Life is 1600? which is 88, which is tied to the beast above, which is the 12 zodiac signs in Jesus. Why do you think the government uses? Why do you think the government uses the Bible to do the inaugurations? When you, get, you put your hand on the Bible, why do you think the government is subjective to the authority? Why do you think the authority? Romans 13, verses 11, when you read this scripture right here. Look what it says. There is no authority that is which God has established. Well, what's God? Well, obviously, it's tied to Ra. 
the Egyptian sun god Ra, the 12 apostles, the Christ, Lucifer's in there, the Alabath's in there, Ahura Mazda's in there. They're all in here. All of it, time travel, 88. There, it's all here, ladies and gentlemen. You, it's it's kind of undeniable, right? It's kind of undeniable that all this information that I'm showing you here. And I mean that. That says it all. God is 374 and the 12 zodiac signs with the 13th. So when somebody says, oh, God tells you not to follow astrology. Well, God is astrology. According to this, numbers don't lie, folks. People lie. Human beings, we all lie. We lie, folks. We're not authentic human beings. That's because we want to look good. We don't want to look bad. We don't want to get it wrong. We want to be right all the time. That's how this reality works. Nobody wants to be wrong. It's not my fault. It's their fault. That's why people are constantly like, it's them, it's they, their fault. Oh, they're deceiving me. It's NASA, it's this, it's me, 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 me. It's always something external. It's never you. You're never wrong in your life. It's always them that's wrong. If they ain't got your truth, they're an idiot. They're a moron. And then you're no better than that person that you're freaking slamming and, and bewildering and just being like, how are you to be a good person when you're hammering people that don't agree with you, that don't agree with your truths? That is not unconditional love, ladies and gentlemen. That's conditional love. Ricky, don't try to. Ricky says we don't lie as bad as of our government. So what? Are we doing? Are we doing like? Are we pulling sticks here to see who's got like? Oh, you got. Oh, you got more than I do. So I'm better than you. No, everybody here lies. Don't think that because yours isn't as big as theirs, oh, well, you're off the hook. Own your shit, man. It's just you against you anyway. There ain't no competition. You don't got to try to defend your truth. You don't got to slander people and say they're wrong because they've got this truth and it's not in accordance with yours. That's what causes division in the first place. We got to get this right. Unification is where you do you, I'm going to do me. I don't care what you do. Go market your shit, man. Just don't put my shit down. Because I ain't believing in what you believe in. That's low-frequency bullshit, folks. That's not how you raise the consciousness of the planet. Calling people names, being belligerent, you know, like screaming at people, cursing. That, that's, the, that's a behavior I don't condone. That is not how you unify a planet. Whether or not people are lying to you, whether or not you stop paying attention to them. Ricky, if you think you have to call them out and do that, then by all means, go do that. See, I don't pay attention to the mainstream. So if you feel like your job is essential for you to go call them out, maybe that's what your job is. Maybe that's what your screenplay is. I, then go do that. I, you know, I'm grateful I don't get to have that code. Not my, that's not my cup of tea. It's not fun. Let, I'm let somebody else go do it. That's not bowing out or being irresponsible. That's like strategizing and saying, well, that's low frequency energy. I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to partake in that. You don't get to be a star in their movie, Ricky. I can tell you that right now. But if you feel like you came in here to do that, if you feel like your redemption is to go do that, if you feel like you need to go in there and crush the competition and beat them up and expose them and do all that kind of stuff, you know, the, the energy that you're going to need to do that is low frequency, anger, resentment, bitterness. There's no, you tell me where unconditional love is when you go do that. When you have to go in there and fight the system. Show me where that's unconditional love. That is absolutely, completely against the fabric of unconditional love.
trust me, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm telling you, if, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're resonating with what I'm saying here, right? Like, and, and I'm not saying I'm the authoritative voice here, but believe me, I'm being authentic. I am not the authority here to tell you what, what your screenplay should be. I'm giving you mere suggestions. See, I'm a strategist. So it's like, what is my best strategy moving forward? to have the best experience. All of you want that, right? Like if I do this, what is the reward I'm gonna get? What am I gonna get as a payoff? And then what kind of reaction am I going to get? So you, you go start smashing at the hornet's nest, you better believe they're gonna come at you and try to sting your ass. Is that the best way to remove a hornet's nest is to take a go baseball bat and go hit, hit it hard? Hell no. I'm merely just giving you suggestions on like this, the collective consciousness is not going to change by you going out there and trying to change it. It's not going to do that. It's too big. And I know, I know, I know some of you are going to respond. They're going to say, they're going to, you're, you're going to say, well, if we don't do it, who's going to do it? Well, won't, won't God do it? You would think like people have faith. Oh, well, Jesus is going to come do it. Okay, well then, we, we, why should, well, let's just go roast marshmallows. See, if you realize how magic works, if you realize how energy works, see, the only thing that exists in this reality is when you give it energy. People give their energy away to organizations. The organizations feed off that energy and the energy that they feed off of allows these organizations to become bigger to become more powerful. That's magic 101. So if you get out there and you go fight the system, you're feeding it. That's what you're doing. That's a one plus one equals two fact. You are feeding it. You're not making it go away. You're actually making it grow. Magic 101 is turn it off, change your life. A lot of you, like, you don't want to do it anymore. You're like, I'm done. Like, uh, I'm done. I've, I've done that. It doesn't work. There's nobody that you need to save. You just need to set the example. What example are you setting? So if you wake up tomorrow and say, you know what? Like the, I, I tell people all the time, like what's one of the greatest things that happened to you, Logan? I shut the mainstream off. Really? Yeah, how, how did it make me feel? I don't live in fight or flight. I don't live in fear. If there's a big, like I'd be sitting on a beach right now. If I knew that the damn, there would be a solar storm coming, a natural cataclysm. I'd be sitting on the beach with my chair. I would not be afraid. I'd be like, okay, this is it. Cool. Because this ain't it. That's my level of consciousness. Well, how about yours? What's your level of consciousness? The change is you. And when you change yourself, you send a ripple out and that ripple is going to allow people to say, oh my God, I really like the way that is. Like, you know, like that's why I'm a huge fan of Jordan's work. Because he, he has a gift. One of them is his voice. It's so soothing. People listen to him. He inspires people. And he tells you, tell, him, him and I, that's why we get along so good because our messages are so the same. Why would you give your energy to these organizations that they ain't giving you anything back? <clears throat> All right, I think I'm gonna end this transmissions. It's late here. I've been going on these long rants.
So Lee says drug abuse is an issue. I would say masturbation is an issue. Sex addiction is an issue. There's always an issue. You got issues. I got issues. <laughs> Tell the demons to F off. See, I look at it as they, I, I make a lemonade out of that whole thing. <laughs> right? Like I get, I, I get taught lessons by the antagonist protagonist. And then I get grateful for it. The hardest lessons, the, the, the biggest lessons, the biggest payoffs you get are not from you just falling down and scraping your knee. That's not where your big payoffs will be found. The big payoffs is when you fall down and you, you nearly cut off your leg. That's where you get the big payoff. All right, so I'm going to end this with... Um, I'm going to end this with a few cards. I'm going to do the uh, just the cards of illumination. I'm not going to do tarot. Um... So many, everybody does tarot. And it's great. I love tarot, but I, I'm going I'm to do um, just the cards of illumination, the 52 cards. If you're new, like the, why the cards? 52 cards matching the 52 weeks of the year. Four suits, four seasons. 13 cards per suit, ace through king, 13 weeks per season. 52, prison planet, 52. Stuck inside the cards. It's tied to Gemini. Gemini's got Castor and Pollux. Guess what Castor and Pollux equal in numerology? 52. Gemini's got the prison bars for the logo. Three. Three is lithium. Lithium, they give people that have bipolar disorders. It's tied to your brain. Three is a broken eight. All right, I don't know what to expect with these cards here. I'm just going to pull them. Let's do three. The message for everybody. The message for everybody here. After all the rants that we went on, thanks everybody for your questions. Thanks for sticking with me, listening to my rants, uh, watching the slides, everything that I've shown you tonight, remembering the energy coming in. Be non-reactive. Be more of an observer. That's how you win the game. To not, to not play. Go watch Tron Legacy. Go watch Tron Legacy. It'll tell you right in that movie, the way to win the game is not to play. How do you not play? Not engaging in the game. It's, 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 it's very challenging to not do that. How do you not play? I don't think you can't play, but I'm talking about when, when life starts to poke at you. I'm telling you right now, it will come to it'll come to you, and it'll be like, "Are you sure?" You'll like be done playing, and then it'll come. And then some something will happen. Someone will come back into your life, and then and it'll, they'll remind. And it'll ask you, "Are you sure you don't want to play anymore? You sure? Come on, just one more time." You're like, "I'm done, man. I, I'm not. I'm not playing anymore like that." It's, it's, it's a challenge. And it, like, I have my own personal endeavors on what that means. And the list is like of the, the requisites of doing that are very cutthroat. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, three cards. Let's see what the universe has to say. Let's see what God's going to say, the supernatural's going to say, whatever. What is it? It's going to talk. What is it going to say based on everything we talked about here? 
The way to win the game is not to play. Let's see what it's got to say about that. The way to win the game is not to play. What does that mean? The way to win the game is not to play. What does that mean? Let's see. First card. <laughs> yeah. Trapped and limited. So the first card, the question, the way they win the game is not to play. Well, you're trapped and limited. That this is, this is my birth card. This is the trapped and limited card. Being stuck down here in this reality. Eight is the Taurus field, the infinity symbol, the infinity loop right there. First card, bam, pull it out. Eight of, sword, eight of spades converts into the eight of swords. Card 57 slash 58. 57 is Truman Show, 58 is Puppet Master. It's my birth card. Yeah, welcome to my world. Second card. The way to win is not to play. Well, you got the six of cups. This is the card of Christmas. This is playing. But this is nostalgia, going back to a kid again. I, I, I have a feeling I know what this means. The way to win is not to play. What happens when you're a kid? This is the card of Christmas, December 25th, Christmas. This is carbon. This is being a kid again. What happens when you're a kid? Imagine, you know, you're an adult right now. You have all these responsibilities. The game, it's like, it's, it's in, like, are you sure you have like all oh, this hot girl walks by, this hot guy walks by. Oh my God, I really like the chemistry. Oh my God, I want to get in their pants. It's like the game constantly sucking you back in. You sure, you sure, you sure, you sure? You're an idiot. You're a moron. Are you sure, are you sure, are you sure, are you sure? Well, like, what does this mean? What, what do you think, do you think, Kids are looking at, I mean, I, I know it's different now, but like, think about when you were a kid. I mean, I'm, you know, like I grew up in the, in the seventies and eighties. So I'm looking at it from that perspective. What are you like? When I was a kid, man, I was, I was outside playing. We didn't have internet. We, I was like, I, I got lucky if we had ColecoVision or in television, we played out the video games that came out. Right. But we didn't have a lot of that stuff to play. It's like, go outside and play. We, I was in the woods building forts, building things with sticks. Be like, like, what did that mean? The game of life was way different for me. So this is saying, go back to being a kid. The way to win the game is not to play. How do you play? Go be a kid again. Tough to do when you're an adult and you have all these responsibilities and you have all these enticements and all these distractions and all these people that want to get out. Hey, I want your opinion on this. You're not going to vote. You're not going to do this. What about this? This guy's, well, this guy, this and it. Just the, the game keeps saying, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure you don't want to play? But what about this? I'm going to strike some fear in you. That's why I, I turned the mainstream off. Greatest thing I've ever done. Because I become a kid again. I really have become a kid again. Because I don't see the distractions of what an adult sees because I'm not plugged into the mainstream. So people send me the stuff. But then I, now I have the eyes. I look at it like a kid does. Like, what does a kid do? That's five, six years old. And he's watching the political debate on television. He's like, what the hell's going on here? And he's not even saying that. He wouldn't be saying that. Five or six year old. Well, maybe some kids would, but they, they don't know what a political debate is. You wouldn't know how to make heads or tails. The game couldn't suck you in. Let's get the last card. The way to win the game is not to play. Trapped and limited and then going back to being a kid. Getting out of being an adult. <laughs> going back to being a child. And the last card. The way to win the game is not to play. The last card. Seven of clubs. Using your mental mind. This is a card. Now, the interesting part is, is this card right here is a card of defending what matters. Now, obviously, the way to win the game is not to play. Well, then you wouldn't, def you don't need to def defend anything. That's what this card means. You don't need to defend your position anymore, ladies and gentlemen. You don't need to do that. I know you want to. I know when you get that phone call and somebody's trying to talk to you about politics and try, I'm telling you right now, you're going to remember my voice. That's the, 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 it's the universe saying, are you sure you don't want to play? Oh, let me have your cousin call you and talk to your, talk about politics for 20 minutes. And now hopefully with the mindset you have, you can be like, dude, I mean, you can listen to them and you can just watch it like it's a damn movie. You'll start to like, is this real? Is this for real? Like these people are, they're like 
They're, they're not even getting paid to talk about this. This crazy nonsense. You don't need to defend yourself. The way to win the game is not to play. Stop defending your position. You don't need to anymore. You don't need to defend your position. Go back to when you were a kid and you didn't know any better. Kids don't need to defend their position. I know it's different when you get older and maybe you start to develop character. I'm talking about a kid that doesn't know any better, a kid that's really, you know, like, like imagine a kid who's like, you know, been in the wilderness or a kid who's living in the country, hasn't been in the city, hasn't felt any kind of resistance. Maybe that was you. Try to remember all the way back to when you were a kid. The way to win the game is not to play. Go be a kid again. Break away from all the resistance. Because we get the trapped and limited card. The way to win the game is not to play. Yeah, you're stop being trapped. Stop thinking you're trapped and limited. Go be a child again. And stop defending your position. You're not here to save anybody. Your job, you didn't incarnate to save anybody directly. Or to wake somebody up. You may think that, I know, and I'm not here to take that away from you. Some of you want to believe that you came here to wake people up. That's totally, go wake yourself up and set an example. See, like I'm hoping that, like when I say I don't watch the mainstream anymore, I hope that rubs off on people. And you're like, well, okay, cool. What happens if I turn the mainstream off? Well, I'll save a hell of a lot of time every night watching the damn news, the brainwashing dirty laundry news. And then I get to take those hours back that I normally would be spending talking about it with my neighbor, talking about, maybe it's a, something you get on the phone with your mom or dad with and you're like, yeah, did you see this? Or did you see that? Oh my God, geez, I can't believe this is going on and yada, yada, yada. And it's like you spend an hour on the phone talking about that nonsense, which you're not even getting paid for it. You're just marketing for it. And your ideas are going out into the collective and they're collecting and guess who's getting it? What you're talking about. Indirectly, of course. So the message is pretty clear. I mean, we got the six, seven, eight here. To get out of the prison, stop feeling like you're trapped and limited, go be a kid again, and stop defending your, your truth. You don't, you don't need to do that anymore. That's, not, that's, not, that, that's over. You don't need to defend your position. I mean, you don't see someone that works at Circle K running over to someone that works at 7-Eleven and, and, and threatens to go out there and, and, you know, like, hey, get out of here. I want to kick your ass because you work at 7-Eleven. I work at Circle K. You know, people don't do that shit. Or you don't see somebody that works at Chili's and they're running over to TGI Fridays and be like, hey, man, you're the chef over at Chili's. I work at TGIFs and I'm going to kick your ass because you work at Chevy's or Chili's. People don't, what, that, that's, how, that's how dumb this is. Oh, well, my God, you don't believe in, you don't believe in Jesus, so, well, you're, you're just, you're not going to make it. How could you, you, what do you mean? Dude, division, 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 division. You go do you, I'm going to go do me, and I certainly ain't going to defend what I need, I, what, what matters to me. So have fun. Go argue with yourself. Okay? Th this is how comical our reality is, man. Like, seriously. This is, this is the next, probably the next tier in life. You know? I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of some other funny, funny examples. I mean... Anyways, all right, so you have these cards. Now you know, ladies and gentlemen. Stop feeling like trapped and limited. The way you feel trapped and limited is because you're trying to, like, defend what matters to you. Nobody's believe oh, Nobody believes me. I'm the black sheep. Great. You should, be, you should be proud of that. You should be proud that you're the needle and not the haystack. You should be grateful that you're not the haystack because the majority of the world is the haystack. And the haystacks are the worst because they're the worst judges out there. Okay? 
So don't, you don't need to defend. Go be a kid again. And it's, it's not about defense. Remember in sports, it's a very easy example. NFL football, soccer, baseball, hockey. What wins the game? Somebody has to score. Nobody likes to tie. Nobody wants to go in a 0-0 tie and have that go on your record. No, you want to have a W. You want to have a win. Well, the only way to win in sports for the majority of them is you have to score a run or score a bucket or score over the bases. You don't win with defense. I know it. you, you use it to stop the offense, and the, but your offense has to win. Your offense has to go score damn points. Defense doesn't win games. Offense does. Someone has to score points. So are you focused more on your defense, defending, because you're just not confident in your truth? That's what I see a lot of people. They're just not confident in what they believe, and they're too busy defending. And then you get into duels, division, and that's a low frequency, and that's just not a frequency you want to be in at this day, day and age. That's not love. That's not unconditional love. Next time you move into that, ask yourself, am I, am I living a life of unconditional love? So go be a kid and you don't need to defend. It's all about what's your offense? What does your offense look like? That's what it looks like. All right. So uh, let's see. What do I want to play? Um, I don't know. <sighs> Let's play some, um, All right, let's do some, some the, for the great band, the Villagers of Ioni City. And we're going we're gonna to end this with the great song called Age of Aquarius. Go support this band. I'll have this in the description so you can easily click on it. Maybe not right away. Um, but this great band, support their work. The song's called The Age of Aquarius. Amazing song if you're a rocker. Um, and that's all I got, ladies and gentlemen. So it's been a fun one. What's your question? 66. Thanks everybody for joining in tonight. Sending a lot of love to all of you, wherever you're at around the world. Big shout out to the moderator, Stephen and Pamela. Thank you very much for supporting this great research. Thanks to all your Patreons. I really appreciate each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. All you great decoders, man. Keep doing you. Keep doing you. Be the best little devil you could be, right, in this reality. So that's all I got for today, ladies and gentlemen. Till next time, we will. See you later. of love.